So in the cutest shit ever, he gets his little preschool backpack, starts stuffing it with his toys, right? Because he's going to leave and go yeah. live outside. This is in the dead of winter in Korea. It's cold as yeah. shit. So my mom looks at him and she goes, oh, you, you think this is your stuff? That's my stuff. She rips the backpack off of him, strips him butt naked. I'm talking about balls out, baby <laughs> dick out, everything, right? <laughs> Fucking kicks him out, leaves him in front of the door of the house, locks the door. Right. And my mom said, like, your brother is so in five, four, three, two, one. What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the COVID free Genius Brain <laughs> podcast. I just took my test. Yeah. Thank you for the at home test. David. Yeah. So I bought That's a bunch cool. of uh, at in home tests. So anybody who comes in to the podcast now has to take a test. It's very simple. It's fast. It's, it takes about 15 minutes, but gives me a peace of mind specifically because of the holidays right now. So I know people are going to leave. So I want to make sure that everybody's okay. I take the test quite frequently. My fucking nose has no sensation in it now. <laughs> How's your taste? Uh, my taste is like 50% back. And then the uh, my sense of smell. I found out my sense of smell came back because I farted. <laughs> <laughs> I, I smelled it. it. Where's that smell? <laughs> yeah. <You> smell it? <laughs> <laughs> that was like the worst way I found out. Oh. I couldn't smell anything, and then something smelled rancid, and I'm like, oh, oh I farted. That's me. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh shit. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, and I was a little relieved that I could fucking smell my fart. Yeah. <laughs> that was a weird thing because you know, I was talking about this on the podcast with my buddy Gabo, and I think the the. The thing that I kind of started to realize too, and I kind of got it before, was just the idea that a lot of people who don't care about COVID, they're seeing it from a very narrow point of view of, I'm young, everybody's going to get it, so who the fuck cares? No foresight. Yeah, there's no foresight on it about a virus that most people don't know what the side effects are. So for example, I was just talking about it with Ed, uh, found out that a friend of mine, um, they caught COVID and they had memory loss. <laughs> what the fuck? You know, Dang. you know, can't remember shit. So, I mean, that wasn't a part of the, the typical list of COVID, right? And that's not what he was yeah. expecting. Uh, somebody else recently, we found out through our, our buddy Nick that he has a friend who actually just passed away from it uh -huh. and didn't, I don't know, they, she didn't have like underlying conditions, but she just had a kid. So her immune system or whatever was shot. Uh, four kids now doesn't have a mom. Such and, a tragedy. Exactly. So sad. So like, you know, when, when, when people kind of have this idea of, well, I'm young, I should be able to survive it. It's like, well, the thing is nobody knows what happens with COVID yet. There's new things that are being found, found out about it every day. We just found out that there's a new strand coming yeah. from Europe. <laughs> so, uh. so, and it's like the, the, uh, the efficacy of how fast it spreads is like 70% or some shit. It's oh, way man. more vicious than the, than the current one that we have right now. It's inevitable, right? Yeah. And like when, when I found out you had it and then like all this shit coming down and Dan said there was like the record number of cases in a day, a couple mm -hmm. days ago, I just felt like the walls are closing in on me. Like it's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's I'm just going to get it, you know? And when I had it too, when I was in that room, I fucking was going to lose my mind, dude. Yeah. And it only took about one day because <laughs> I'm not, it's, it's that idea of your freedom not being there. And, and yeah, I... I'm not in shackles. I could technically leave, but I'm not going to be that asshole that has COVID that's going to walk through a hotel and give it to somebody. That's not going to be me. So Did you think about, what if I die alone? Did you think about that? <laughs> no, I didn't think that. But you did it? <laughs> okay, well then. All right. If I ever catch up, I'll be like, okay, don't think bad thoughts. It's just, that's just me. Like, I'm already like fucking being self destructive no. and shit. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that should think of like a dark turn. No, what I did think about, though, was like uh, people in prison. Uh, That's the yeah. first thing I thought about. I thought about people in prison and being in solitary, well, whoever's in solitary confinement or people who are just locked up in a cage and how terrible that feels. The idea that your freedom is stripped away, that you can't leave on your own volition made me lose my mind. I think that mm. was, this This is probably the first encounter of depression I've ever had in my life. Yeah. And it felt very uh, defeating. So now I could actually say, I know what depression feels like. Like hope is lost. Like That's, this could be it or whatever. Exactly. And so when I, there was a point when I was sitting in the room and I just remember, I teared up. <laughs> <laughs> just started tearing just up. Like, it's just me. I'm myself. <laughs> and then, you know, this here doesn't work. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I just sat there and I started tearing up. I was like, Yo, man, this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then I kind of snapped out of it. I was like, well, t you know, you can't leave. You know, yeah. you are paying for this hotel room. You're being kind of a <laughs> bitch. You know, <laughs> but just the idea of being alone and then uh, not being able to walk outside and do normal. Because I, I typically now bike every day. Yeah. I haven't since because I'm, I'm still not 
like a hundred percent physically there. Like mm. I, I still get fatigued uh, um, pretty easy, mm. and that's the only remainder side effect. And then mo now most of my taste is back, and then uh, now most of my smell is back as well, according to the fart. Yeah. So, <laughs> so <laughs> well, just to take it back. So you said this guy lost his memory, right? How yeah. How long? Please. Uh, I think it's still there's like a fat chunk of it that's still gone. It hasn't come back. This is like he just like woke up one day like, did Hillary win? <laughs> 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 so what happened? What's happened in the last four years, guys? That should be so funny. Like, what? I was sick. What are you <laughs> talking about? What did I get? <laughs> He goes, why do they have a fucking celebrity apprentice guy up yeah. there? And it's like, dude, that's the president of the United States, bro. Why is the game show host the president? <laughs> bro. But it's like, Black Panther, Jeez. what's that? <laughs> mm. Yeah, but it sucks because who knows what's going to happen with this virus right now. And I, and I feel, you know, like the new perspective that I got to was like, there's, there's other things aside from just dying from this virus that is, seems to be more... I don't want to say more, not more dangerous, but it's just, it's a danger that a lot of people don't think about the mental yeah. health aspect of it, right? Mm -hmm. Being away in isolation. Um, and by the way, it's not a fucking walk in the park. Uh, yeah. I had what we call mild symptoms, but that shit fucking sucked. Yeah. Like there was a, typically when I get a headache or I have a fever, if I take Tylenol, it, a, a good amount of it dissipates. Tylenol, nothing, wasn't doing shit. So I just had to deal with the headache and, and the pain the, and all that shit. It was a like, weird headache too. Like I can't describe it, but it was a really, really sharp pain. And I, I just at a certain point, I remembered one of my friends in high school who, um, there was two people. So my brother had a friend in high school who had an aneurysm and his, um, so an aneurysm is when your blood vessel pops in your head or some mm -hmm. shit, right? And so he was having these crazy headaches. And so, you know, like I think like with Asian Americans, they were trying to give him like traditional Asian medicine or whatever, but they didn't realize how severe his situation yeah. was, right? And I'm, I'm pretty sure this kid was going through a lot of mental issues as well. But he, like from the excruciating pain from the from his head and everything mm -hmm. else, from him, uh, from having this aneurysm and his mental health and his mental situation, he actually killed himself. Damn. So he, uh, he shot himself in the head and he killed himself. You know, for, those are the thoughts that came to my you know, head. Here's the thing when you say aneurysm is just like that. I know so many Korean parents, like my friend's parents, who died of brain aneurysms. Yeah. And I thought you were going to go there. I was like, damn, another Korean to brain aneurysm. <laughs> and he's like, oh, shit. No, it was like, it was, it was a, a high school tragedy, kid. man. Yeah. And then my one of my other close friends, he had an aneurysm in high school. Um, and I remember he had to get his head shaved. But my friends are so fucking goofy because <laughs> I didn't know what an aneurysm is. And I had to ask around what it right. was. And they said like a blood vessel popped in his head. Right. And so they had to, you know, uh, he had to go through surgery. They had to fix that little vein in his head or whatever. Um. Some doctors out there like this guy got it completely wrong. Yeah, <laughs> but, this is from what I remember in high school. But I remember because I walked up to him and we were in the hospital. And I, I don't like hospitals, but just seeing him in the hospital just all fucked up. And I remember uh, <laughs> this fool asked me if I could feed him something. I think it was like a pudding cup or some shit. <laughs> he's like, "Hey man, like, he's like, I'm really hungry. Can you feed me?" And I was like, "Cool." I was like, "Yeah, man." Like we're all sad and shit. And I and I take the spoon and I put it in his mouth and I feed him. And then he goes, "You're my bitch." <laughs> Like sedated, <laughs> like he just got out of surgery. He goes, "That's what I thought. You're Fuck my it. bitch." I was like, "Fucking guy got me." <laughs> like, you fucking got me, you asshole. <laughs> Fool's like giggling, half awake. Like this fool fucking fed me some pudding. Hey, what a friend. Yeah, right. Exactly. Speaking of friends, yeah, yeah. So we um, last time we went over uh, a very, very, very fun film called Mulan. <laughs> Which some people got really upset at at the the our opinions or critiques right, of the film, right. and it's funny because I kind of got into it with one person because he was just saying like, "Oh, if I was in a room with these two people, I could probably counter every single one of the things." I'm like, "If you were in a room, what, what the fuck are you talking about, guy? This is just our opinion of the film." Man, thanks but, for letting us know about your fantasies, bro. <laughs> <laughs> got anything else for us? <laughs> but then it was so funny just listening to what he was saying and then his points weren't valid at all you yeah. know he was like I, I forgot i can't even remember but it was some, it was something ridiculous right he wasn't even picking out the points that we were saying which mm -hmm. i'm fine if you like the film that's dope like yeah. i'm glad you liked it doesn't you're not going to change my mind though we're just some two just two dudes bro. <laughs> yeah. we're just two dudes man when don't take a movie <laughs> were you the fucking director you yeah, cut back <laughs> like shut the fuck up uh hey he must honor right <laughs> I forgot. Did I not honor your family? Yeah, he's honoring not... my culture. <laughs> I know, son of a bitch. But I thought it'd be really fun. And I, we haven't done this on the podcast before, but um, I always talk about how much I love 
Korean cinema, right? So in yeah. the conversation when we talk about Asian American films or Asian films in general, people always say, you know, we're we're waiting for these um, a lot of Asian talent to come out. But in our minds, I'm like, bro, there have been great Asian films. Yeah, yeah. have you seen? <laughs> <laughs> and guess who has them? Netflix, Amazon, all of them. Hulu, they got them all. They're all over the place. And one of the films that I that I love growing up was this film called uh, Chingu. Chingo means friend in Korean. Mm -hmm. So if you guys don't know about this film, this is like the pinnacle of Korean gangster films. Right. This is like <laughs> the Korean Godfather and mm -hmm. Goodfellas in one. Right. It's actually, I watched this film three times during quarantine because <laughs> Ed texted me. He's like, like, dude, they on, have Chingo on Amazon. It's I'm on like, Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> dude, there's, it's funny because when I started, when I watch it now from, uh, you know, because we're older now and I watch yeah. it, it hits a little harder. Right. You know, the camaraderie, the friendship, we're the We're catching loyalty. the nuances mm -hmm. of like, maybe the, we thought were slow parts because there's no action or whatever. It's like, now I'm like taking it in with the storytelling. I'm like, this film is like, a Korean film masterpiece. Yeah. Like it's it's great is the most that like I could say. Um, came out in 2001. Damn. Right? So I was yeah. in 11th grade. Yeah. 10th grade. So like uh, obviously your parents went to the VHS store mm -hmm. to rent it, right? And watch mm -hmm. it. What, like what were their like impressions of that? When you see well, it? my parents, I don't know if my, I think my, I didn't see it with my parents. I saw it with a bunch of my friends. Right. So they didn't want me to watch these type of films. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it was somebody getting stabbed in the stomach 32 times. Yeah. <laughs> That's another thing, like the stabbing, the fucking stabbing in this movie. There's no guns, guys. There's no guns because guns are illegal in Korea. Right? Yeah. A lot of stabbing and... I, just get ready to stomach that kind of stuff. Yeah, so so in general, if you guys don't know, like Ed said, guns are illegal in Korea. So when you see a lot of gang violence, just like bats, pipes, yeah. two by fours, and specifically this uh, sashimi knife yeah. that you see a lot. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's like, why is everybody a sushi chef yeah. in Korea? <laughs> no guns, bro. <laughs> but it's essentially like a mini katana. Yeah. Right? But my dad would rent that shit over and over again and watch it over and over again, right? So like specifically one story. So like uh, when I first smoked weed was I was in like fifth, like I was 15 years old. I was like 10th grade and they opened up the weed and then to like smoke it. I was like my first time smelling weed, right? I'm like, actually, I've smelled this before, right? Where have I smelled this? Mm -hmm. right? It's from my dad just chilling on the couch, maxed out watching Chingu. <laughs> and it's like, I it smells like pine cones in here. <laughs> You know what's so My funny? My dad watched that shit so much. Man. When I like, I was uh, relatively ignorant to a lot of things, right? Because a lot of the stuff that I was introduced to in terms of like drugs, like you know, crack, cocaine, base, all this other stuff, right, was uh, a pretty normal part of life in my in the neighborhood that my parents right. store was in right so this is not stuff that i really sat there and second guessed or knew what was going on right because mm -hmm. my, my parents were shielding me from it even though i was there the whole time but i remember when i was in high school right and people were smoking weed and i was i smelled it i was like it smells like my parents store here <laughs> <laughs> you know? I, was like, I was like why do you smell like my parents store <laughs> you know i know what's going on and they're like yo there's like what's going on here and they're like it's like it's weed i'm like that's weed I was like, I've been smelling this shit my whole life. Oh, so shit. I associated the smell of that with my parents' store. Whoa. Because okay. everybody would smoke weed, you yeah. know, right in front of the store all the time. But I assumed that was cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. So fucking funny, dude. Yeah. Anywho, so yeah, my dad watched this movie all the time. And the way my mom would explain it too, because she'd pick it up and watch it. Mm -hmm. But there's a certain point to where she, she hates it. But that the beginning parts of this movie, like my parents both, they just love it. When you watch it, it's such a throwback to the life and times, right? That mm -hmm. just that opening scene of um, this foggy ass truck going to the streets and the kids like playing in the all that smoke kind of thing. And yeah. I'm watching it and I'm confused about like what's that smoke or whatever. And I asked my mom, she's like, Yeah, we used to chase the truck, like but it's all dirty. Now I know it's unhealthy, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> but she's <laughs> like, Yeah, the kids we go around like and my mom would explain like these simpler times that she lived in back in, like sixties, seventies, Korea. Mm -hmm. And so she had a nostalgia for it too, actually. And yeah, my dad as well just loved that opening scene where you see simple life. They're like watching the babies go to and shit. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> They're yeah. They're just yeah. straight up about it. Oh, yeah. yeah. This so. podcast is brought to you by Skillshare, my friends. No matter what 2021 brings you, 
you can spend it by creating something meaningful with Skillshare's online classes because time is what we make of it. With Skillshare, you can find inspiration in the moment and learn how to express your creativity, my friends. If you want to talk about classes I've been taking, well, let's start with this. We should talk about plants at home to uplift your spirit and your space. Because my friends, my place be drab as hell and I need a little foliage to lift up my spirits. Now, if you're a type of person out there that doesn't like learning on somebody else's schedule, Skillshare is that for you. There are so many classes and courses that you can take that'll help you take your hobby to the next level, your business to the next level, any of these courses that you can think of that will help you get to that next part of your life, your hobby, whatever, your interest, Skillshare has it. And I love, love, love how it's all organized and ready to go by credible people teaching you the right things. Explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash brain and get a free trial of premium membership. That's Skillshare.com slash brain. Skillshare.com slash brain. Explore your creativity at Skillshare.com slash brain. Like nostalgically for my parents, like, yeah, they loved it. So I always, it was on a lot actually in my home. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting because when you watch this film, you get to see, it does remind me of The Godfather a lot. Oh, not so much the, uh, Goodfellas, Goodfellas because you're watching somebody from when they're a kid all the way through their adulthood mm -hmm. and then after. Yeah. And so like in the beginning of the film, you see like this motley group of friends, which is like your neighborhood friends, right? So in Korea, uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's like this in Japan too. But usually the people that you're in school with, in class with, those are your friends for the rest of your for life. life. For life. From elementary school all the way till, uh, till grade school and above, you're usually, until you go to college or university or whatever, yeah. those are the same people that you grow up for life. Yeah. So they have these huge bonds. Even my dad now, he still has the same friends in Korea from when he was a little kid till this day. Bro, my husband is 80. And she went to Korea a few years ago and she called me the cacao and she said, yeah, I'm with my elementary school friends. <laughs> what? Yeah. Like, that's special. Like, yeah. maybe that's the government system putting the public whatever out there. Mm -hmm. But man, that's something pretty, special that yeah. we don't really will ever know, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. So when you see, like, uh, if any Korean kids are out there and you see a picture of your dad with these people in a group when they were in high school. Those are the friends that he had since he was a little kid, since he was in preschool. Mm. Um, so they all kind of go through the schooling system together in the same class and they grow up together in that same neighborhood. Yeah. So it's so the kind of movie starts off with that type of weird friendship. And every person in that group has a very unique personality. Yeah. There's the there's the goofy guy. I forgot his name. So I actually wrote notes. Okay. Because <laughs> last time we did Mulan just off the top of the dome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I'm pretty impressed with how long we talked about mm -hmm. that shit because mm -hmm. we were so upset with that. <laughs> of course, it burned in my memory but, for the rest of my life. But because we love this movie, I want to do it right. Yeah. So I actually wrote some notes of like the plot and whatever. So the film follows the lives of four uh, childhood friends, Chun Suk, the leader of the group, Jun -suk, and his yeah. father is the powerful mob boss. Mm -hmm. Tong Su, whose father is an undertaker, right? Mm -hmm. And he's the second captain, right? Yeah. Uh, class clown Chung Ho, Chung -ho that's the a ADD thing. kid, right? Yeah. And Sang Tech, who is exemplary student, just straight A, he's kind of a square, but they're all been friends since like childhood, mm -hmm. right? Do you ever like see yourself in some of these kids though when you watch it off the bat? Oh, 100%. Right? Yeah. yeah. Especially from, like somewhat for me is Tongsu, mm -hmm. that chip on the shoulder kind of guy. Yeah. Right? And that'll, that'll move on. So the first scene is like uh, 1974, right? And he's like, my aunt just got a new VHS player. It's like, what is that? A video recorder? What is that? So I think the best part of it like is that it's opening up and like um, showing us the time and place through technology, something we understand because we're watching a movie. Yeah. Right. So it's like, yeah, I'll show you at home what it is and what do they put on? Porn, baby. Porn. <laughs> Which is so reminiscent of a bunch of boys. Just boys. Yep. Yo, I can't tell you how many nudie mags I found in the forest. Like <laughs> from literally Flint in the woods hanging out and there's a fucking nudie mag. Dude in Washington in the forest, there's a nudie mag. <laughs> dude, I there's this one kid in my high school, uh and even before high school, but let me, I just I'll just say this one. So yeah. there's one kid in my high school, this dude, it was this black dude, his name was Shane. 
This guy was a very interesting guy. He used to, he used to, uh, this is during the time that we would like burn CDs. And this dude Shane was so unique because <laughs> usually black people didn't burn CDs. That was an Asian person thing <laughs> like, <laughs> in our school. But then, you know, he had a lot of Asian friends. I yeah. was one of his Asian friends. So he was doing like the Asian people shit, which was burning CDs and trying to sell them and shit like that. Did he so, drive an Integra? <laughs> 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 yeah, I, he this fool had uh some fucking uh what, what do you call those those fake spinnies on oh it, yeah on, in, in his fucking car it was like yeah, a old jet or something yeah. yeah and so he uh <laughs> i remember this fool would burn uh fucking uh hentai onto these little <laughs> into these vcd files on these cds and he would sell it to some of the black kids that fuck with anime but didn't want to oh, openly say shit. they liked anime yeah <laughs> but they were he was i was like oh you you you're selling them like anime yeah. he goes nah hentai <laughs> I was like, so they're fucking watching cartoons fuck each other like, what the fuck is going dude, on capitalist that's what these kids do too right mm -hmm. it, it shows their innocence because they don't know what a uh, pussy is yeah right and it's like <laughs> what do they call it it's a pulba pulba it's pulba like, no. pulba but they call it no it's called a menstruation yeah <laughs> they're having this conversation about like womenly parts and stuff yeah so it's showing their innocence like they're they're like you know problem kids because they're watching porns but they're still so innocent they have no idea what they're seeing kind of thing but in turn still what they do with it is that they they capitalize on it like your friend mm -hmm. and they start selling the porn and then chun Sok, the captain starts acting like the enforcer with this taekwondo shirt on mm -hmm. so all this like lifestyle shit is like happening like in their DNA, they're just like doing this shit as kids. And the hierarchy of their group is already starting yeah, to build. It's already established. It's establishing. Yeah. So um, they go to a hobby store and Tong Su finds a fake knife. Mm -hmm. And that's what we were talking about. Just like, um, what do you call it? Like a precursor or like a. It's, 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 it's foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. Yeah. yeah. Although it's just like, get ready for a lot of knives. Yeah. Knifing, man. Just get ready. And then um, pretty much they it kind of goes forward to high school and they all fall in love with that lead singer. And yeah. um, Santek holds a like a party and it's not Santek, uh, uh, Chun Sok, yeah. yeah, the leader. He holds a party at his place where he gets the band to come in, mm -hmm. right? And when he shows up the Santek the square, he's there because he wants to meet the girls. And then Chun Sok starts clowning him and <laughs> busting his balls for being a square. Yeah. And he gets all pissed he off. Snaps. And snaps and like tries to act like a tough guy and shuts off the music. And it's just awkward. <laughs> like he wasn't made for that shit, right? Mm -hmm. And they talk outside. And then Chun Sok lets his feelings be known. Like, dude, like you're my friend. Why you come here, you know, at my house? Like, by the way, so his dad's a monster. He has a really nice big house. Yeah. And Sangtek never comes over, but he only comes over when there's girls. And mm -hmm. so he was upset about that. And he's explaining that. And so as a peace offering, he he offers the girl, right? Yeah. The lead singer to have a one-on-one. -on -one. And what happens? Tongsu. Tongsu gets jealous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he confronts him in the bathroom. <laughs> now, what's that say about the Korean culture? It's yeah. just like... Has his pants down with his dick out, just taking a piss. He's like, what the fuck, man? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it, this is also too, like, it's relationship building because you'll see the relationship between Sangtek and um, Chun Sok, the, mm -hmm. the leader. You'll see their friendship specifically throughout this whole film. And this is like uh, a, a little gem that they're showing to you that yeah. how, how much their friendship evolves. He actually holds their friendship to a very, very high standard. Mm -hmm. So mind you, as we just mentioned, Chun Sok is the the boss. The He's boss. like the Chang. Mm -hmm. He is the shit. Scary as fuck. Everybody fears him to death, beats the shit out of everybody. But he has this really huge soft spot, soft spot for this specific friend. Yeah. And I think what he likes about him is the fact that even though he's so different from him, he still... He he speaks to him honestly, yeah. always at always. all times. Doesn't care that he's the the, the high school chang or whatever. So he could always count on him to always be honest and be truthful with him. And right. I think that kind of shows like a little bit of how their friendship evolves throughout the right. whole film. And the film starts establishing like um, Santek's household. They have a very solid family. Like they're eating dinner together, watching TV, and they have plans to buy a house, mm -hmm. right? And but then the other guys, it shows their life in the classroom where uh 
the the ADHD kid gets he has this little comedic scene he's trying to hide and he gets beat right yeah for me it shows how Koreans don't believe in ADHD yeah <laughs> and they will beat the fuck out of you for like what the fuck is wrong with you yeah so just to give a little background um I'm it's not like this now from what I heard from other people yeah. it's not as violent as before but back in the day when my parents told me that he was in grade school these these teachers would beat the shit out of these kids for having a bad grade yeah for having a bad grade not paying attention in class goofing off when i say beat the shit out of you i'm talking about watch this movie like yeah <laughs> <laughs> like you think it's an exaggeration in the film from what my dad told me he goes no that's, that's what it would be yeah that's they I would sock them in the face punch them in the stomach get a stick beat the shit out of them in class so one of the very like um uh, one of the most important scenes is uh Chun Sok and Tong Su are in trouble because they had bad grades. Mm -hmm. And so the teacher is lining up all the bad grade students and making an example of all of them. And he's asking them, what does your father do for Ooh, a living? This is such a good scene. Right, yeah. And he asks them what they do. Oh, okay, so your dad does that? And he ba ba just beats them. And you're getting bad grades when he works so hard? Tong Su goes up and he says, my father's an undertaker, right? And beats the shit up. Okay, so your dad works hard and da 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 and he gives him the stink eye. Yeah. <laughs> gives him the stink eye back so the teacher hits him even more, right? What well, one last time. And then he walks away like a hard ass. Chun Suk comes up, grabs him by the cheek, and says, What's your father do? And then he goes, What's... and then he says, Kandar? Like the gangster, right? Yeah. He's a gangster. Like mobster. Mobster. Yeah. And then he beats the ever living out of him. Yeah. He's like, You think that's special or some shit? And he beating him and he fights back and he goes, you think that's a good thing? Yeah. Right? Who said it's a good thing? I didn't say it's a good thing, right? Mm -hmm. And it, that shows that his self-awareness of the environment he grew in, like he knows. It's like this is what my is. life situation. Yeah. I never said it like I was proud of it. Yeah, it's not good or whatever. Yeah. And that shows Tong Su, his behavior though, with his dad who loves him. It's like, why are you like this? Because mm -hmm. he wants to be like Chun So. Yeah. You know? And meanwhile, Chun So wants to be like Sang Tech. Exactly. You know? <laughs> And so, look, this is a great fucking storytelling movie. Like, this is so good, like, as it goes on. Um, so, as uh, they they get into a fight at, like, a skating rink, right? Yeah. Um, what's his name? Sang Tech Sang is Tech. trying to, like, He's flirting coast with the Captain yeah. Sabo. <laughs> yeah. And then gets in trouble with some guys, right, from a rival school. And they just punk the shit out of him because he's actually pretty square, mm -hmm. right? And they fucking put a knife to his neck, right? It was like a barber blade. Yeah. yeah. And yeah, barber blade. And then the the two badasses, you know, Chun Sok and Dong Su come and save the day. And they just school those guys. And then they line them up, make them count up. Hana, two, seven. And then they let Sang Tep beat, just the, beat shit the shit out, out of him. The funniest line about that too was like when <laughs> when they come in and so Sang Tep's getting his ass, well, not ass beat, but they put the, the barber blade, um, the razor blade next to his throat or whatever, yeah. right? And then, uh, not Chun Sok, but to Tong Su. Tong Su comes in and just fucking Shecky kicks the yeah. shit. <laughs> Kick. Kick and the kid, dude flies up. Yeah. But you could tell how menacing they are in terms of their reputation, specifically as a gangpe yeah. or as a group. When he looks at him, he goes, he goes, let me see that knife. Let me see it. Pojo. Why are you you wait to kakodan go so like why do you why do you have this in your hand like, what are you doing this shit he just takes yeah, yeah, yeah. he takes it. he just takes the knife he goes what are you doing with this cute little yeah. thing which kind of just shows how domineering and scary scary because they they've are. been at this since they were children yeah right and all the other people their age they've established themselves that's the weird thing about korea is how people establish themselves and their reputations in high school mm -hmm. you know that's why it's like that ego thing gets built there but if you watch closely chun Sok actually doesn't do anything yeah he sits in the back and Tong Su's doing all the work. And when they put him in the in that hallway and they're just smoking cigarettes while they let Sang Tech beat the shit out of them, the camera pans. Chun Sung's not even watching. Yeah. He's on the stairs. He wants no part of that stuff. So it says something about his character with what's going on here, which we'll later show. Um and then like after that I think uh Chun Suk tells uh Sang Tech, like, don't just start a fight. You have to finish it or that guy's going to come back for you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Which he does. Which he does. Yeah. I got to go back to that. Just the action of humiliating humiliating people. 
that's the kind of shit that I did <laughs> with that kid, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I never finished that story, dude, actually. There's actually an ending. To, so last time I was here, I shared a story about how I, my friends and I made this guy kiss my sister's foot, right? And I never actually finished it, but uh, the story, but just like what happened in this movie, because, you know, my friend stepped in for me and said, either Ed's going to beat you up or you got to kiss his feet. Like, and all 20 kids saw, and over the years they came back, right? Like, I think a couple years after Iraq, I came back here um, and I was filming this B-Boy event, <laughs> right? Yeah. And um, this B-Boy event in Seattle and then we're all setting up. We're there early and the DJ is going setting up and it's that kid. It's him. He's like this beat boy in Seattle and he's a DJ. This podcast is brought to you by Purple, my friends. Is the mattress you're sleeping on making you very sad and uncomfortable? Well, that's because you don't have a purple mattress. I have never slept as well as I do right now. And in fact, when you don't sleep well, don't you know that it messes up your cognitive ability? You can't think straight. That's why you're mumbling all the time. That's why when you're trying to lie to your wives and your husbands, you're like, um, I don't know. It's because you don't have a purple mattress and you haven't slept well, so you can't lie better. I have been lying so well ever since I've had my purple mattress. I'm kidding, by the way. But seriously, purple mattress has the best technology when it comes to their mattress. We're talking about proprietary technology. Yes, the comfort and the instant body adaptation that it does to your body when you sleep to match your sleeping style is not like any other mattress out there. No hassle shipping and returns, risk-free trial, sleep now and pay later because Purple has financing available as low as 0% APR for qualified customers who you can get to sleep in amazing as soon as possible. My genius brain listeners, experience the Purple Grid and you'll sleep like never before. Go to purple.com slash GB10 and use promo code GB10. For a limited time, you'll get 10% off any order of $200 or more. That's purple.com slash GB10, promo code GB10. For 10% off any order of $200 or more. Terms apply. <laughs> I'm like, oh fuck, right? It's like, what's your b-boy name? My b-boy name is DJ Kissing. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Pantopisu. <laughs> yeah. But man, I fucking, I fucking finished it, man. Like, uh, I went up to him mm -hmm. as we were, he was setting up, and he saw me. He's like, oh shit, he froze. Yeah. I was like, hey man, and I stuck my hand out. I was like, I'm really sorry. Yeah. I'm really sorry for what happened two years ago. And he took my hand and we're both tearing up, bro. <laughs> and I was like, look, man, I shouldn't have done that to your kid. And he was like, no, I was stupid. I was a dumb kid and whatever. Yeah. And we hugged it out, did the event. And whatever. So there's a happy ending to that, guys. There's a happy yeah. ending to that. I wasn't a total asshole. Yeah. Also, my sister even, she told me later after she heard the podcast, she was like, hey, did you know I actually called him later and apologized for that too? Oh, wow, that's nuts. Sora, I'm fucking proud of you. I love you. <laughs> that's so funny. At the B-Boy Jam, he just starts playing R&B music only. <laughs> it's like, it's all emotional just, shit. Just mood. It's like, can you not play the Vitamin C graduation song yeah. as we're trying to B-Boy? <laughs> as we're trying to dance here, please? I just, like, the thing about when I was watching that scene again, I was like, fuck. Like, my parents didn't teach me that. I didn't. We didn't see Chingu and do that shit. Yeah. Like... I was like, damn, that's just in the Korean DNA to <laughs> fucking do something to a motherfucker. It's to like subjugate somebody. Yeah, that's the Han, man. That's yeah. the Han. A lot of Korean punishments like that too, though. You know, oh, yeah. like tegari pago, like take oh, your hands man. behind your head. So you, tegari pago, you basically put your hands behind <laughs> your back. <laughs> You get on your, yeah, it just, it sucks, dude. Like, and you just got to hit your face to a fist. There's other stuff too, where you have to g take your hands behind your back, your feet, and then you balance your forehead and your feet. Oh my God. Off the ground. Yeah. I fucking Holy hated that shit, shit dude. That's that shit crazy. sucks so bad. I think part of my like big shoulders is because <laughs> my dad made me raise my hands for hours. Honduro. Yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, like. All those, even though it's like terrible scenes for sure, that's like, ah, that's us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. That's us. So what happens is like, because Chun Sok was like, finish your fights, it gave him a piece of advice. Sang Tech offers him a piece of advice. Go back and apologize. You know, after the, that teacher beat him and they walked out of class, go back and apologize, come back to school. Mm -hmm. He's like, all right. And they go and do it, right? And to celebrate, there's this big montage where they race and it's just like they run to the movies. Just they're still kids, right? Even though they're hard asses. Mm -hmm. And 
Then what happens? The rival school kids see him, see him at the theater, and a fucking riot breaks out. Just beats the shit out of Sang Tech in yeah, the bathroom. They beat the shit out of him, and uh, Chun Sok and Tong Su have to come save his ass. And it's like four versus two hundred or some shit, wild event or whatever. Ultimately, big big trouble. The police come, and you know you just hear the police whistles, and it fades to black. Yeah. Sang Tech in this panic of trouble this is something he's never been in before steals his parents money that they were saving to buy a house and runs away to his gangster friend chun Sok, right yeah to be like let's run away to seoul mm -hmm. right <laughs> and what does chun Sok do though Chun Sok says no he goes i'm gonna live my life you do what you have to do and they go their separate ways like the the thing what 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 happens is like like we, we talked about before is Chun Sok's aware, right? He was like, man, did you think that I was going to be like, yeah, let's go. Yeah. Right? He's like, no, no, dude. Like you have good parents, you know, go ha back home to your parents and face your punishment. Because he said when he was a kid, his mom was sick and nobody was taking care of him or whatever. So he ran away from home and he was missing for days, right? Yeah. Until he couldn't anywhere and he came back home. And all his uncles and his dad, no, nobody gave a shit that he was going Yeah. Nobody punished him. Yeah. Right? And it's like he was saying, he's like, man, we split up in middle school and got back together in high school. You know? Yeah. If I went to middle school with you, I would have been a good student like you. Yeah. And he's like, ha, if those Samchuns fucking beat the shit out of me and taught me my lesson, I would have fucking got my shit together. Yeah. And he's just like, this, this is my life. He's like, don't join me. Right? And he yeah. sends him on his way. It's just like... Which is Beautiful. like, <laughs> you know, it goes back to them planting the seeds of their relationship and their friendship of how he looks at his life and he's actually kind of envious of it. You know, he's like, I really wish I had what you had. Yeah, like, don't look at me and look up to me because I actually look up to you, <laughs> you know, yeah. even though he's the leader and the boss. Yeah. But he's looking at him and saying, like, I really wish I had what you had. And he almost, for his sake, he wants to protect his innocence. Right. You know, he yeah. doesn't want to be the person that tarnishes his life. Right. You know. Because like all throughout the movie, when you um, when it cuts through, um, like you start seeing like his dad doesn't fucking give a shit about him. Yeah, his dad does not give a fuck about his kid. Like as you see it, and so he he has like a lot of resentment, right? And so Sang Tae goes home, and you could hear his dad scream. Yeah, but they said my mom just opened silently opened the door, you know. And who knows what happened if he got the shit beat out of him? It's like he went back home. He faced his punishment. He went back to his family. And he, they go off to college, right? And they go to visit uh, Chun Sok. You know, it's like some years have passed. Motherfucker is a meth. He's like, a fucking fiend. meth crackhead. Yeah, he's out of it. Dude, he, this is why, like, Koreans have some of the best acting. His face, when he's like, you know, yeah. I got to, you're like, I'll tear your pussy the, apart. Yeah, like, this dude, shit. <clears throat> when they go see him, together they're a little older they're obviously a lot more mature and then he has that classic asian fur blanket on him you know yeah. it's funny because the blanket that he has on him is like i have that exact same blanket everyone has my house. <laughs> the exact same one right yeah. and he's shivering he's actually he's actually on uh, uh he's coming down from a high yeah right so he's going through withdrawals and shit yeah and when they open the door they actually see the girl that they were he was trying to set up something right. with Right. right and so it's a little shocking he ends up marrying the girl like and it, it goes back to show that like uh chun Sok back in the day had all sorts of confidence and self-awareness he's like this girl's already mine go ahead and have yeah have time with her or some mm -hmm. shit right but there's a real tragedy to her character too isn't it like what she could have been or supposed to be because of her talent and her popularity like because for korean girls like maybe you're on top because like of all that beauty or talent or whatever yeah. a dude at the top in a korean high school is a fucking piece of shit yeah, <laughs> yeah. and it's like the reality of what you see like she's super pretty she's very beautiful yeah. korean prom, prom king with korean prom queen is not a walk in the park yeah. right and it's crazy because like he the way he's talking about her it's like he's saying, like, oh, I kept her around because the pussy was good. Yeah. So, you know, why wouldn't I keep just her around? Verbally abusing her and saying right. just like crazy fucking curse words where it's just like, we understand because 
like our parents have probably said some yeah. fucking crazy shit like that too but he is hounding her with that shit. yeah he's like telling her it's like so there's like a part two where you know she's coming in and she's doing like the housewife stuff bringing yeah. in drinks and snacks or whatever and then um you know she smiles at whatever sang tech or, and, and then he looks at her and you could tell him he's like a little jealous mm. right and that's when he starts flipping out saying it's like oh you want to fuck my friends because they're college yeah. kids like they're they're college educated he goes i'll fucking rip your pussy in half right. he's like saying some terrible shit terrible thing you know but and it goes to show and this is where you get to see that relationship between santek and him because he comes in and even though this fool's like a cracked out meth head mob boss he looks and goes hey cut that shit out yeah like you're doing too much and right. he goes i'm sorry <laughs> right because tong su tried that shit on him yeah put his hand on him he's like what am i to you Mm -hmm. You know, I, because he was like, why didn't you give me this girl, right? And he's yeah. questioning what a friend means to Chun Sok, mm -hmm. Dong Su at this time, you know? And he's he's like, what am I, your sidekick? Yeah. Right, if he's your friend, what am I? But Chun Sok never answers him, and that's one of his mistakes. He looks back at him with the fucking death stare and says, Chukule. <laughs> yeah. Right? And so in, in turn, like, which is that thing where you, when you're looking up to someone, and they're telling it through the story where Sang Teng be like, yeah, right? He's yeah. just like talking down to him. And he's like, oh, 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 oh I'm Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Which is wild to see, but like you're seeing the respect that he has for a guy, which later on also plays through. Um, let's see. Tong Su, at that point though, all that mayhem and chaos happened, right? And what's the next thing that he's doing? Because he's expelled from school. He's cleaning a fucking dead body with his dad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? And his demeanor is just like, fuck this shit, right? And his dad's like, right? Yeah. <laughs> just tell him. And what I saw that scene, I was like, this guy's not alarmed by dead bodies. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want to clean dead bodies. He want to make dead bodies. Yeah. You know, because he wants to be like Chun Sok so bad. And he's just like looking at his future, cleaning dead bodies for people. And he leaves, fuck this shit. But what's he do after that? He causes this big scene at the school with the bat and breaks all the windows and the trophies and all that shit to make a scene for himself. Something Chun Sok would never do. He wasn't even there for that. Yeah. Right? And he's going to go out there. He's going to be, he chooses to be a gangster and make a name for himself. To me, when I watched that thing, that was his saying like, I will never be like my dad. And he was making sure that he has no way to turn back. Yeah. So he goes ahead, make sure that he will never be allowed back in school. So there's no turning back at this point. Right, no turning back. So, but look at Chun Sok's situation as a drug addict. When Chang Tech goes to take him out to buy a Christmas card, right? Yeah. The reason why, like, the, the drug addict, I could understand it's like his mom dying, his dad fucking hates him. It won't buy him clothes for the winter. That's why he's like yeah. shivering. You know, he, th he calls him a half human and all that shit. And... He's telling him, like, he has nothing to offer. He's like, but if you want someone me to kill somebody, I'll kill I'll them for you. I'll kill him. I'll kill him. I'll kill him yeah. good, you know? Um, and that's all he has left. That's like all he is, you know? Whereas Tong Su just wants to be that for some reason. Yeah. You know? And during this time, too, um, what, after the time lapse happens, they ask where Tong Su is. Tong Su is actually in jail right He's now. He's in jail. So, in order for him to come up in the gang, he has to go to jail. He has to go to jail. And. And Chun Sook's like, I already been there like three or four times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah. like he's seen some shit. And like, uh, but it cuts to Tong Su coming out of prison. Who's there to see him? Not like the the Korean tradition of when you come out of prison. Tubu. Tubu or white cake, something white, like yeah. purity, like you've been atoned, you you did your time. Yeah. His dad is there doing the right thing and loving him, showing up for him. Mm -hmm. His gang pe his gang pe friends aren't there, his friends, well, he has no that's what I'm seeing is he obviously doesn't appreciate his dad. He gets kind of embarrassed, like, ah, oh, about yeah. his dad bringing him to Wu. And the fact that he's also alone, he actually doesn't have friends. Yeah. Mean, meanwhile, the other guys are visiting Chun Sok, you know? Mm -hmm. And when it cuts through, um, basically, uh, Chun Sok, in order to get clean, he just leaves his father's house, right? and follows the second hand man in charge mm -hmm. instead. And he leaves um, his his current boss to follow this other boss. Yeah, His current boss is feeding him the drugs, right? And then there's that scene when he faces him in the Chinese restaurant. Oh yeah. So fucking badass. 
Roy. And he's like, he has, he takes the the knife, he sterilizes it with over this candle, and he and he literally puts a blade to his face, and he starts cutting. He goes, "Hey, don't worry, it's sterilized." <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. And he starts cutting his Dog. face, and he just has to take it. I'm like, "Holy shit!" Dude. You could have been like, "Drink this pee. It's sterilized." <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, what the oh, fuck? Shit. But he's giving him a speech of loyalty. He's mm-hmm. like, "You motherfucker, I gave you all the drugs you wanted, and this is how you trust you treat me. You're gonna leave me, mm-hmm. you know." But that's the way he lets him leave by that fucking knife in his head. Yeah, you know, and and lets him leave. Meanwhile, cut to Tongsu now. Now back in society, he's at the same restaurant and goes to that boss to get a job now because Chun Sok left and mm-hmm. he wants to take his place. Yeah, you know, following in his friend's footsteps and perfect time, perfect opportunity, and the good money that he mm-hmm. sees with it. So. The next scene being um, his uh, Chun Sok's father's funeral, so big Gangpe funeral and all that. He's wearing the whole getup, hella cool with it. All these shots are so fucking beautiful. The mm-hmm. lighting is like this natural. It's so so great, and they're having a smoke outside, right? And they're catching up with what the friends are up to, and he tells him, "I'm gonna work for your old boss," right? And then like Chun Sok's pissed because he's like, "Yo, this guy sells drugs to kids," and yeah. So like, Chun Sok at this point doesn't fall for this his old boss's loyalty speech. This idea of loyalty of the hand that feeds you is bullshit. Mm-hmm. The hands that feeds you is just toxic or whatever. He's like, don't deal with that, man. But Tong Su's situation, you're like, what is he gonna do? You know, the last job is cleaning his Chun Sok's father. Yeah, you know, and so Chun Sok understanding each other's situation and th- Tong Su's situation. He did fucking, you know, Planet of the Apes when they put the hand oh, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what it reminded me of. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It was fucking the blessing. He got the blessing from yeah. his captain mm-hmm. to be his own man. You know, then it cuts right. Like, well, I mean, he walks out into the alleyway. It's just this beautiful shot. He's like, "Hey, thank your dad for, you know, doing my father's body." And all that. Yeah, and he's like, "I'll call him tonight." And it just stays on that shot and he just walks into the darkness. And it's just like, what the fuck? When I was a kid, like, this is such a beautiful fucking yeah. movie, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's so much story to it, guys. You guys, you gotta, you gotta watch it, man. And then whereas it cuts to the, the, the time, highway. The highway, the time skip. Yeah, the time skip. So it's like 1990, 91. Uh, there's a cab going. And then we're seeing a POV of the limo that Chun Sok's in. Mm-hmm. And then he, this whole crew, they pull over this taxi and they see, you know, twist the fate. It's Sang Tech. Yeah. Chin Boya! Chin Boya! And then they fucking hit the window and all that shit. This will literally almost curb the taxi off of the fucking highway just yeah. to stop him like a fucking Gang Pei would, you know, right. just to see his friend. And the next scene is oh, just like so scene. beautiful. Like yeah. these Gang Pei's these football it's like you wonder why there's no korean like rugby or football players they're all gun <laughs> yeah they're all the, the largest bodyguards. men are a bunch of bodyguards so yeah. at this point just to put things in perspective chun Sok has now cleaned himself up yeah right so he has actually made a, a big name for himself within the mob gang peg group mm-hmm. right so he's very well respected now he's off of drugs he's not doing any of that shit and now he's running shit right. um as one there's there's still the older bosses but he's like a step below yeah. that so he's very well revered in, yeah. within the group so the the movie is so brilliant when it starts showing the journey between um tong su and chun Sok here because while they're drinking and hamming it up over some kalbi, um, Chun Sok's talking about the fucking reformations he's making within the gang, yeah. within the fucking like organization, and how he's taking care of people and his and whatever, and he's doing like innovations within the insides and trade deals, da 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 da. But Sang Tech is all drunk and shit. <laughs> he doesn't even respect Chun Sok at all. And he's like, gosh, you're still a fucking gangster, dude. Yeah. You're so, a gangster. Because he was kind of making comparisons of like, see, like you went to college and like, I'm smart too. I can yeah. do all this stuff. He's like, the fuck are you talking about? At the end of the day, you're still a fucking gangster. Yeah. And then the two gangpes in the back give him this stink eye. <laughs> yeah. And then <laughs> the best scene. Ch- Chin Sok says, what? He, goes, <laughs> he basically looks at the two guys. He goes, basically in Korean, he's telling him like, hey, get your ass over here. 
right? <laughs> he goes, you, you lost your fucking mind? You know, it's like, who the fuck are you looking at like that? It's like saying that's his friend. Yeah, that's my friend. <laughs> yeah. How dare you. It's like, you don't deserve to eat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go, he said, go sit in the trunk and hold your balls and think about what you said <laughs> yeah. and repent. <laughs> So the crazy thing about this scene, it goes back to how much he respects his, the friendship that he has between him and Sang Tae. Yeah. Right. So, and they don't, those two, they just see, oh, somebody's talking shit to our boss. So yeah. we got to do something. And but they didn't realize they overstepped their boundaries. Like, mm. you don't ever speak to my friend that way. Like what's even <laughs> Sang Tae doesn't realize the power he has being Chun Suk's friend. Yeah. Is Chingu. And he's just like, oh, we're just friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it's a thing though, like when you see this shit, like, Chun Seok takes it on the chin every time Sang Tech tells him what's up. Yeah. You know? And he he just sits there and takes it and he fucks with anyone who has anything else to say yeah. about it. And that's fucking that's fucking dope. It's like loyalty <laughs> and friendship. And the cool yeah. thing about that, there's a very popular uh, phrase that they say in that. And it, what it translates to is, uh, it's like, he basically says, hey, I'm sorry, I was out of line. And he's like, why, why do friends need to apologize to each other? Like, yeah. this doesn't have to be said. You know, it's the unconditional love that they understand. Yeah. And it's like, when we talk about Han and the hate and the <laughs> resentment and the fucking anger, the other side, the intense, passionate friendship and love is there too. Yeah, like, it's like friends don't have to apologize with each other. I mean, like, I'm sorry if you see like Koreans hanging out with each other all the time, but there's like a special <laughs> bond. You're like, yeah. you gotta understand, man. Yeah. You know, um, and the beauty of this sh movie, like translating that on the screen and showing like it like really come to work. Like, yeah. It's so great between opposite worlds, yeah. right? And he takes his words and it's just like, you know, uh, <laughs> they cut to the scene. Like I've seen this shit where my, Dad's friends would try to like obaba them, like carry them on their back. They're all drunk and shit. Oh, that scene is the best. It's, it's so, so good. literally he's drunk and he's giving him a piggyback ride. He's like, I've been waiting to do this for you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? And then, but it's still in the most gangster way. The 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 lackeys are still in the trunk of the fucking limo as <laughs> holding as, their balls. <laughs> as his personal driver is still driving next to him in an empty alleyway or an empty road. <laughs> they hit a speed bump and the trunk hits him in the head. head. <laughs> <laughs> and they just have to take it. And like, I wish like people understand the subtlety of Korean humor and filmmaking. Like they didn't say shit, they showed it. And yeah. that's like, that's filmmaking. Like Korean filmmaking is top notch. We love it, guys. <laughs> it, we love it. It's the best thing too, because even then, like Sang Tech in his ultimate wisdom and nice guyness, he goes, hey, that's enough. Let them out of the <laughs> truck. And he goes, oh, okay. He, and he looks at his two lackey. He goes, are you guys tired and hungry? Yeah, you guys want to come out? And he's like, he's like, are you young name? Yeah. <laughs> he goes, I do. And he goes, see, they're fine. <laughs> they just stay in the truck as this bounces at the top dude. of the truck is smacking their head. Oh my gosh, dude. And it's, I can I can recall like the time my dad, I got in trouble once where my dad made me stand outside with no pants and a t-shirt. And I had to stand out there holding my balls. Yo, what the fuck is with parents, <laughs> Korean parents, stripping their kids butt naked butt and kicking them out? Yeah. And let me tell you this funny story. So my mom told me um, not too long ago, and she was kind of making comparisons of how me and my brother were as kids. And so my mom said, like, my brother was a very, very stubborn child. Yeah. Like, if, if he was set on doing something, he was going to do it no matter what. The kid had balls. And I was like, what do you mean? She goes, well, when, when we were in Korea... And you were really, really small at the time. And this is when your brother was about four years old. So he was in preschool. So I was washing dishes and I was telling your brother to go clean up his toys. And he ignores me and he just continues to play with his toys. And my mom goes, you know, like, I'm going I'm to count to three. If you don't clean up your toys, you're going to get your ass whooped, right? Looks at my mom with like this look, goes, I don't care starts <laughs> doing whatever and she goes hey and then my mom you know my mom's a thug she don't give a yeah. fuck she goes she goes i'm gonna beat your ass she goes do you do you want to live outside this is my house he goes fine i'll go live outside this is a four-year-old <laughs> kid right so he'll, he'll he goes fine i'm gonna go live outside so in the cutest shit ever he gets his little preschool backpack starts stuffing it with his toys right because he's gonna leave and go yeah. live outside this is in the dead of winter in korea it's cold as yeah. shit so my mom looks at him and she goes oh you, you think this is your stuff? That's my stuff. She rips the backpack off of him, strips him butt naked. I'm talking about balls out, baby <laughs> dick out, everything, right? <laughs> Fucking kicks him out, leaves him in front of the door of the house, locks the door, right? And my mom said, like, your brother is so stubborn. He didn't cry for the first, like, 15 minutes. 
And he just Whoa. stood up. It was dead silent. And she goes, what's going on? And she kind of looks out the window. <laughs> And he's out there not crying, just like <laughs> stubborn, still upset. And for 15 fucking minutes, butt naked outside until he goes, oh, no! <laughs> like, I can't. He's like, I fucked up. I'm so sorry. Yeah. But that's like, that's the thing. That was like the Korean punishment. It's like, I actually, this is my stuff. Like, you're a guest in my house. Know your fucking role, you know? Know I, your fucking position. I got to tell you, you know, whenever I got a beating, like my dad would challenge me in a way like how many lashings do you think you deserve this time right and i'd have to come up with the number Yo, and he'd determine if it was too low and he'd say why it's too low <laughs> and shit it's like so i'd have to figure out exactly what my punishment was worth it's like, the worst thing and my yeah. dad used to do that thing where he would bring out his fist and tell me to punch my yeah <laughs> it's like you have any idea how, what kind of sadistic fuck you have to be to tell your kid to punch their own face into your fist oh shit. it's like i didn't beat my kid he beat himself up <laughs> <laughs> like he like, ran into my fist. <laughs> I didn't did do it. He I did. did. He it was it. consensual. <laughs> he was consensual. He enjoyed it. <laughs> this wasn't a me too oh, beating. Like he man, did it himself. The, the it's fucking loopholes, <laughs> man. <Yeah. laughs> it's like how's this domestic abuse? Oh, uh, this is American dream. <laughs> <laughs> They make Korean Korean oh, punishment fit shit. inside of America. Oh my god! By making us punch ourselves into their fist, dude. <laughs> so fucking funny. Oh man. And anyway, uh, back to the movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we're seeing Chun Sok. He's a f- the fucking man. He's the fucking man, right? And Dong Su, though, who is he? What's he up to, right? First scene, you just see this girl kind of clicking some heroin, and you see some booty mm-hmm. and some muff diving. And it's yeah. like raw, and then <laughs> they're passed out on the bed, um, and psh, you see a flash, mm-hmm. right? And it's Dong Su. And his crew, they're extorting this. They're blackmailing him to extort him for a contract, a construction contract. Yeah, which he gets that drug dealing boss to win the lottery to do. So he's doing shady shit, but he's doing it out loud. Mm-hmm. He's letting it be known. It's like so that his name gets out there. And meanwhile, Tun Sok is doing it the other way, where he's like really bringing reformation within. So when you see them at the karaoke, and they're sing and he's singing "My Way" by uh, I did it my way by uh, Frank Sinatra. Yeah, like man, beautiful filmmaking from a Korean perspective of a gangster like doing a Frank Sinatra song. Yeah, there's a little hint in there, right? And he truly does do it his way in the yeah. entire time. Meanwhile, Tong Su's doing it Chun Sok's way. Yeah, from what he thinks he knows. Yeah, right. Like this is what a gang pe is. Yeah, this yeah. is what a gang pe is, and he's looking up and, and up to Chun Sok still behind the scenes. And when you see, like, uh, let's see, let me bring it back to my notes. You know, there was this. I think there was a scene before that that was very poignant, right? Because he's. That that karaoke thing was them sending him off somewhere, right? Oh, oh Sang Tae's going back to America. Exactly, he's going back yes. to America. But he goes see, he's getting like a suit tailored onto oh, him. Tong Su's getting a, a exactly. Tailor, yeah. And there was one part that it sent chills through my spine because it showed the the tumultuous relationship that they have, where Tong Su is still trying to be either an equal to him or better, better, right? Still trying to show something, but he does something very, very small that sh- speaks volumes. So he's like, hey, our friends are going to leave. He's like, oh, okay. He's like playing it nonchalant. He goes, well, Sang-tac? I'll see. Like he doesn't, acting like he doesn't even remember who exactly, Sang-tac is. Right? This bitch. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh yeah, I remember him, blah, 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 blah. He goes, all right, we'll come either way. And he puts his hand on his shoulder, mm. pop, right? Mm. And that, you could tell it pissed him off. Yeah. Like even till now, I'm still your fucking sidekick after I've done all this yeah. shit. Because Tong Su's bodyguards have taken over that boutique, right? Yeah. They're fucking running amok. Mm-hmm. But this other boss, Chun Sok, walks in and and he puts his hand on Tong Su and walks away with it. Yeah. And you can see Tong Su's face like he can't do shit still. Yeah. He still can't do shit even though they're fucking equals in <laughs> gang. Yeah. Like that's fucking baller of Chun Sok. Yeah. You know? And Tong Su still feels that, fuck, I'm still like underneath this guy, right? And like, I, and it's weird because of the way, like Tong, like he, the way he's interpreting it is different from the intense intention of Chun Sok. Chun Sok is just doing that as we're friends. Yeah, you know, I'll see you around. Yo, bro, our bros are in town. And <laughs> yeah. He's acting like he's the fucking big shot because yeah. he kind of is. He built his way there. He made it. Yeah. Right. But, but, he goes to his dad, 
goes to his dad to give him the money he's made. Oh. What's his dad do, though? He goes, you think I want your filthy fucking money? You know? Yeah, this blood money, the people, like, all this shit. It's like, when did I ask you to be a gangster? When did I ask you to make money and, and all this shit? I never asked any of that. Like, yeah, like, dude, vice versa, us and our dads. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah. Because of that chip on the shoulder Tongsu has, like, to be more than a fucking undertaker. Yeah. Like, the thing is, like, um, one of the most important parts in the scene comes when Tongsu puts into plan to get Jun Suk's boss in jail. Yeah. Jun Suk's boss gets busted, right? And what's Tongsu doing? He's out um, at the dock and he's smoking a cigarette. And one of his lackeys pulls up to him, like, the job is done. And Tongsu asks him that question that he asked all his friends when they were kids. Who would win in a race, right? An Olympic swimmer or a sea turtle, right? And that guy's like, huh? And what that's, that whole like debate, right? It happens in the beginning of the movie, right? Where they debate about this. And then this is the second time it comes up. What do you think about what the fuck that like, Sea turtle and the Olympic swimmer race, like was talking about. It's the tortoise and the hare thing. Tortoise tortoise and the hair the thing. length of the race versus, you know. I I looked at it like they were arguing that a sea turtle is a natural in the water. Mm. So, that's Chun Sok. He's born and bred gangster. This is what it is. This yeah. is what it is. And this is his lane, right? For Tong Su, he has to adapt to the water and learn to swim. He has to learn how to be a gangster. Yeah. Right? And then when he asks his friend that, he realizes that he's not a turtle. He's not the mm. sea turtle. Right? Even though when he was a kid, he's like, he knows a sea turtle would win. They're the natural in the water. Yeah. But in the natural, he is a, the Olympic swimmer. As hard as he tries and gets up to the top, he's no whoever wins the race, the sea turtle's a natural in this game. Yeah. You know, as hard as Tong Su is working, he still feels like fucking Chun Sok's sidekick. Yeah. And shit. So Tong Su takes down Chun Sok's boss. Yeah. And um, but what happens is Chun Sok's cousin, right, who's in Chun Sok's uh gang, without Chun Sok's knowledge, takes it upon himself to go take and a kill hit him. Yeah. on Tong Su. And then one of the most badass scenes ever. Ugh. Do you want to explain that scene? So basically, um, the cousin actually asked, basically saying like, oh, we got to take this dude out. And he was like, kind of gave his cousin the dirty look saying like, that's my friend. Yeah. You know, he 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 buried my father. Yeah. Don't touch him. Yeah. Right. Doesn't give a fuck about what he says. And they stalk him. They find out where he lives, waits for him to fall asleep. And he's with his cousin and his other lackey. They go in to murder him. Tong Su knows what's up. <laughs> Beats, like literally, Shecky kicks him through one of the doors. Oh, fucking, yeah. Beats the shit out of them with either a pipe, or, it was a bat or a pipe. Bat, yeah. It was, right? And then he does his gangster ass thing where he takes his fucking ankle, snaps it. So fucking badass, dude. Takes that, look, he's an Undertaker's kid. <laughs> he knows anatomy, bro. Yep. He knows anatomy. He takes the knife. They don't show it. It's like, I, when I was a kid, I thought he'd probably like cut his Achilles heel. Then yeah. I saw I saw the devil. I was like, maybe he, he fucking cut that foot off. Yeah. He broke the bone and cut the foot off. Mm. Ooh, the pain. That's when it starts. Yep. This is when the knifing starts. Get ready. So the cool thing about this film too, when you see a lot of gangster films that came out of this, it was just a lot of gratuitous violence from beginning to end to the yeah. film. This film doesn't actually have that. There's a there's a lot of focus on relationship building yeah. to get to the point. So when you see these gang pit situations happen, mm -hmm. the buildup is so good. Yeah. You know, because you're used to seeing everything. There's this weird, uneasy air between everybody in the film. Mm -hmm. But you're just waiting for something to happen. And that hit that he's assuming that it was Chun Sok's idea yeah. is, the, is the straw that broke the camel's hump at that point. Right. He goes, and oh, it's on now. Now it's on. And Tong Su now is out for Chun Sok. Mm -hmm. Like we were never friends. Right. right. It just confirmed of what, it, it basically confirmed his deepest, darkest fears. Right, we were never equals. None of you ever considered me as friends, and so Tong Su enacts revenge at the docks. Holy shit! Holy shit! I don't know how. What do you, if you call it a trigger warning? But it's like this is the movie where I was like, 
When I watch movie with guns, you can see yeah. right. One knife, <laughs> one knife into someone's stomach makes me cringe so hard. And while this scene is playing out, right, um, beforehand, they're actually showing um, the fucking the Chun Sok's bodyguards appreciation, the love they have for Chun Sok, because when he's singing my way, they're fucking crying. crying. <laughs> They respect him, they obey him, they love him, and they feel for him. And then that dock workers, like they're eating ramen together. What the fuck, bro? Why do you want to be a gangster? He's like, I want to be like Chun Sok Hyung. Yeah. Right? And like that ad- admiration. That admiration that they have for him. But Tong Su comes in with his gang. They got the bats, they got the pipes, and, and they, they got the knives. The sashini knives, yeah. But in true cinematic storytelling form, what's happening is... Um, Chun Sok's training new trainees because he's hands on. He's definitely about like, okay, so we missed a scene where, um, you know, Tong Su's doing the loud shit to make a name. Chun Sok is within his own group. He's at a meeting with that fat oh, pudgy guy. Yeah, he's you know, one and, of the bosses. Yeah, the bosses is like talking shit to all of them and fucking them up and like talking shit to Chun Sok. And Chun Sok's like, okay, guys, step outside. And when it's empty, oh, so he starts crazy. laying it on him. You shiver got to him. It's like, you've never even been stabbed. You never went to jail. It's like, this company that you run is for, like, what does he say? For our youngs in jail, you know, a retirement plan, and for to feed our men. Yeah. Like, this guy is literally <laughs> reforming the gang from the yeah. inside. He's, like, doing it right. So you can see what Chun Sok's doing. Like, even though it's, like, scary and gangster as hell, He's doing the, the, the good this, shit. This scene is, it's gangster. And there's also such a funny moment to it because this guy is literally like the the king that doesn't do anything. It just gets fat fat off of its yeah. people, right? And you right. have Chun Sok who is kind of like, he's, I want to say it's it's rebellious in a certain sense because he's actually under him, under right? Him. But obviously the, the respect and what he's done in this group is held to a very, very high the, degree. The bosses gave him permission to exactly. stab him. <laughs> In this moment, when he tells everybody to leave, he looks at me and is like, you fucking fat fuck. And the guy's like, what did you just say to me? And he just brings out that long Korean sashimi knife, puts it at the table. He goes, the bosses in the prison told me that I could kill you. Yeah. And they know what that means. They're like, oh, that means that everybody wants me dead. Right? And he goes, you have basically fed your fucking fat self off of all of our hard work. You haven't gone to prison, done all this other stuff. There's this awkward silence. And he looks at him. He goes, (laughs) chinguya. (laughs) Chinguya. And <laughs> Chun, like Chun Suk's fucking like fucking like gangster gangpe mm-hmm. death stare to him. Yeah, when he said Chun I was like, ooh, because the, these actors are so fucking good. <laughs> yeah. He looks at me, he just turns into a little bitch. He yeah, goes, he goes, we're friends, right? <laughs> we, we've known each other for years. We're well, I get it, man. My bad, dude. I'm so sorry, you know. Right. And he puts him in his place. And so, in the turn of events, because Tong Su put his, uh, Chun Suk's boss in jail, Chu- and Chun Sok now, you know, and, and like the fucking war is about to happen. Yeah. And they've got to come to a head and fucking talk about this shit. Right. And why don't you lay this scene out? Like where, where it's going, where, where, where they meet. Oh, uh, so did they met, not at a karaoke spot, but it was a, it was a club. Like it was karaoke. a club. Yeah. It yeah. was a Nora Bang. So this is like the iconic thing that everybody remembers from this film. Yeah. Right. And specifically, this is one line that he says that everybody always quotes because at this point, they they have to handle this, right? And there's a line that was said earlier in the film that we forgot to mention, which is basically saying it goes back to this, uh, the idea of the turtle yeah. and uh, the Olympic swimmer. Yeah. It's like, I'm just born to do this. Like, yeah. this is who I am. This is my life situation, mm-hmm. right? Gangsters do what gangsters do. There's, there's, you're we just asking, do what we're told. We just do what we're told. That's what it is. And so they, that line comes back in this moment where they're having this little gangster meeting, right? Mm-hmm. And he sits over there and he's basically giving him an, an ultimatum, right? Yeah. Which doesn't really sit well with him because this is back, going back to his feeling of, what am I, your little bitch? And you're yeah, gonna do psych. what you say? Yeah. yeah. Why do I have to do exactly what you tell me what to do? But you see Chun Sok's demeanor. Yeah. It's he's of a friend. coming up as a friend. Yeah. A chingu, yeah. Which is what he's done throughout the whole film. Yeah. You know, except for what he did in the beginning, which we already talked about. That's probably the catalyst to why their friendship fell apart at that point. Right. Because he didn't say, hey, it, 
he just said, do you want to die instead yeah. of that? And that planted the seed of hate in his head. Yeah. Like, I don't know what our relationship is. Going back to that scene, though, after he goes, right? And then he lets go and backs down, right? And then Chun Sok leaves. Tong Su looks in the mirror, right? And looks at him and he says, says the same thing. Yeah. And you can see him wanting to be Chun Sok in the mirror and to say the same thing at him, which culminates to this scene right here. <laughs> exactly. Right? He's so, waited his whole life to say this to him. Exactly. And so he's basically kind of being very elusive about the advice, but he knows what it means, right? right. He goes, hey, like Hawaii is really nice right now. You know, you should probably go there for a little bit until all the stuff dies out. And he says the famous line that everybody quotes in this film, he goes, Digagara, Hawaii. Hawaii. So he's like, why don't you go to Hawaii? He's yeah. like, why do I got to do what you tell me to do? If you're so fucking scared, why don't you go? And like the acting in that, <gasps> like he takes his time and he's just like putting his fingers through his forehead and he's thinking he's getting the fucking courage yeah. to say this to Chun Sok's face. And he says it like a fucking man. No yeah. He's gonna, but it's about his fucking life too. Yeah. The offer is like, yo, live, go to, go to, go to Hawaii or take your chance and give, finally get that chance to stick it up to Chun Sok. Yeah. And he fucking sticks it to Chun Sok. Yeah. Digagara. Hawaii. And that line just stuck with me. I'm like, fuck, fuck. man. Like it's, it's, it's his almost like coming of age moment. Yeah. One of his biggest fucking mistakes M ever. Worst mistake he could have made. Because he's allowing this chip on his shoulder to guide all of his life choices. Yeah. And it's, it's actually fucking him up because everything that he thinks that he wants throughout his life is nothing that he needs. Right. Right. So it's, this validation that he keeps searching for some of this from this specific individual that he doesn't need to gain yeah. because he is just, so you're you just my friend. You had it, bro. Yeah. You had it. He was your fucking friend, man. <laughs> yeah. You guys are, you guys listening to this? Love your fucking friends. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> God damn it. Like their relationship, it's, there's so many layers to this part, right? And that, this is what I love about this film so much. It's not a, the film isn't a gangster film. Right. It's about friendship. Friendship. Loyalty, mm -hmm. right? Seeing like people who consistently think that the grass is greener on the other side, right? right? And it's also about circumstance. Like some people can't fight their circumstances. They are just who they are and they have to accept it, right? right? And there's one character, Tong Su, where he is specifically putting himself in these situations that he doesn't have to be in. This chip that he has on his shoulder, yeah. right? Which I see a lot. One of my cousins remind me of Tong Su so much, right? Yeah. And I feel sorry for him so all the time. And I see his behavior. He's the black sheep in the family. And he has these similar behaviors that I see in this character all the time. And it's because he's always looked at what everybody else had and wanted what somebody else had rather than appreciating what he had right here, yeah. right? And yeah. then you have somebody like... Uh, like Hung Pek, who's this innocent character, right. <laughs> you know, he just wants to be everybody's friend. He wants to be happy, but he right. sees things, everything through a, such an innocent lens, mm. right? And you had the gangster character where he looks up to him and he wants to be him. So it's just a circle fuck of just yeah. disaster, you know? Yeah. Guys, like, you might not even understand this movie, like, because it's in <laughs> Saturi. Yeah. Like, it's in a different dialect of Korean, by the way. We yeah. didn't even mention that, but there's a beauty to it, too. And, so, Chun Sok hears, why don't you go to Hawaii? And he just, right? Like, fuck. Okay. Fuck. But you could see him thinking through it and accepting this is fucking it, right? He's like, okay, I'll go. With yeah. a smile on his face as a friend, I'll do what you say, right? And then Tong Su Zen's like, uh, right? No, no conflict. And he's walking out the door and the fucking knife is waiting for him. Yeah. And the whole gang is ready to kill him. And then what's he say? He's like, uh, it's his father's memorial. Uh, memorial. Memorial today. Yeah. So I don't go. But the way he says it in Saturi yeah. is like this nice kind of yeah. like friendly way. It's just like this tonal kind of thing. Yeah. And they let him go. And when he when Chun Sok gets to his car, the sign is drop when he drops a cigarette. Mm -hmm. and it's like Ch -ch -ch, and like Something that, that you they probably spent all the budget on in this scene was like this crazy crash scene and like fucking mayhem. And they fucking Julius Caesar the fuck out of Tongsu. And they kill him. And the crazy thing is, this is the saddest part of the film, is right when he's about to leave, he goes, how far is the airport from here? Yeah. <sighs> 
so he's he's going to go to Hawaii. He's going to go to Hawaii. He, he had his moment. He thought about it. Thought about it. He goes, I'm going to go to Hawaii. Something, something in his heart, right? Maybe it's because he had that moment where he got to man up. He had what he needed. And now he's like, I can go to Hawaii now. Yeah. I, I'll just wait it out. Yeah. So he, he asked, he goes, how far is the, how far is the airport? And the person's like, the airport. <laughs> and then right when he's about to go, the cigarette drops. He Fucking. gets stabbed up like a motherfucker. Like it's just nonstop, guys. <laughs> just trigger warning if you're cringy to that. He like got that's stabbed, like I think over thirty times. Thirty is times. What his dad said you're right. later on in the film. Right. And um, I, I mentioned this too. Like when you watch a movie where someone gets shot, or even a Marvel movie, people get shot, and it's just like that you just move on, right? Imagine Captain America taking a sashimi knife right into Red Skull's heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know- these... I mean, well, Thanos did that to Iron Man, right? Because there's a fucking emotional thing in film and cinema. When you stab someone, the audience feels Feel fucking it. something. It's so visceral, dude. Like, and Gang Pai movies was made, were made for that shit. Yeah. This is a, this moment too, when you guys watch this film, like- the the person that's stabbing him is obviously like a, a newbie member in right. the group, right? And he's so got to pay his dues. He's paying his dues. So he's doing this hit. And he's stabbing up Tong Su. And Tong Su is actually looking at him directly in his eyes. And he's like, you're done. Go home. Yeah. You know? You, do it? you did it. All right. You did a good job. So-, <laughs> Go home. so he's still doing the whole like... I get it. You do it. Go home. And this kid's like terrified. This is his yeah. first like probably murder that he's ever done. Yeah. But just that moment when he's looking into that kid's eyes, it's almost like he sees himself in him, right? Yeah. He goes, you did yeah. what you had to do. Go home now. And he just dies in the rain in a pool of his own blood. It's just mise-en-scene. That's what you call it in film school. <laughs> yeah. In that moment, I was like, fuck, man. Yeah. I remember watching that film. Um, like for the first time and then you know I watched it a few times after but that scene always stuck with me it made me so depressed yeah. right and it's just because he's a he's not even a victim of his circumstance he put himself there it's the thing we talked about earlier like when we we're talking about like our dads or whatever it's the self-destructive natures like when yeah. they're trying to do something good they just the fucking pride ego han whatever the fuck you want to call it you know, I'll, like, so when I was mentioning my cousin earlier and the reason why I see that character and I see my cousin and, you know, our, our relationship to now isn't that great because of how he behaves. Yeah. I, I heard through my other relatives that he's doing a lot better now, right? Mm-hmm. But our relationship became really bad because of his behavior like that. Yeah. Um, it's hard for me to talk to him because I get angry when I see him. Like, mm-hmm. I get infuriated because mm-hmm. he has done so much stupid and fucked up shit now that I know as a, as, as a Christian man, my, <laughs> my, my heart should forgive. But then my blood boils yeah. when I see him, yeah. you know? So just to put it in perspective, he and I grew up very different, right? I was the kid that grew up in a bad neighborhood, in a bad circumstance, mm. right? And what I, I never understood about people who glorify people who grew up poor yeah. or in bad situations, yeah. you're trying to imitate this life. I, I didn't want to be poor. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't want to be in this fucking neighborhood yeah. you think i want to do that shit? i didn't want to see when i was when i when my parents were rebuilding their store right the the, the there was nice that we had a i couldn't stay at home by myself so i was with my parents i think i was like seven or eight this is the first time i saw somebody get gunned down you know what i mean these are not things i wanted to see Damn. and so when i would see somebody look at my life and they would hear these stories and they're glorifying it it's like listen i'm not even a gangster or a thug i was just a kid in a poor neighborhood and yeah. i didn't want to see these type of things but this kid was so weird this is my cousin he always found trouble yeah <laughs> he, he had a mom and dad just like i did happy family whatever his father worked in the prison system everything else right worked there good dude mm-hmm. whatever moved into a very nice quiet neighborhood but he always but i would always hear some from his from my aunt like yo he's in trouble again he got kicked out of school he had a gun i'm like a gun <laughs> bitch why do you have a gun <laughs> the fuck you you oh, live in the nicest shit. neighborhood what the f-? but he would specifically choose to be in these bad situations because he wanted to prove something to somebody yeah and it was something that he didn't have to do mm. right and this is coming from somebody who grew up in the neighborhoods that he was traveling to to hang out you're driving 30 miles to this neighborhood so you could be something Some, that you're not. Damn, bro. What <laughs> you know? an effort. You're commuting to be a gangster. <laughs> exactly. Oh, wow. How a gangster commute. 
<laughs> like, Holy shit. How dedicated of a human being are you, right? That you would do. And I'm like sitting here looking at him like, you're dumb. You are fucking stupid. Like some of the situations that I got into when I was younger was because I, it's not that I didn't have a choice per se, but it's just what I grew up around. Yeah. You didn't have that. Yeah. And you actively sought it out. And so throughout his whole life, he had this issue of seeking for other people's approval. Mm -hmm. And he still does it till this day because, you know, I follow him through some social media stuff. And till this day, everything that he says out of his fucking mouth is to seek the approval of somebody else. Yeah. So this is why he never could develop real friends throughout his whole life. Never. Just building and creating an identity, not like who he really is. So he would be around, exactly. So just like Tongsu, he would be around all these mm. like gangpe people, these yeah. gangsters, because he was trying to emulate a life that he was. He was the Olympic swimmer. He wasn't the turtle, yeah. right? And so when I see Tongsu, I, it reminds me of my cousin and it's so fucking pitiful. It makes me sad yeah. looking at that human being. And so eventually with my cousin, like he got into a bunch of trouble. He's cleaned himself up now. He's doing a lot better. He's going to school. He's, he's, he's doing well. But it took him, he wasted like 33, 30, four years of his life yeah it's like why did you do that you didn't have to do this yeah. and so the, one of the hardest things that he had to come to terms with was that he didn't have friends right i'm like he had no friends too he's exactly like that yeah. and so he would he in fact rejected his friends mm -hmm. yeah the people that mattered to him the most that cared about him the most rejected. he pushed away yeah and the people that he kept around him were people that used him only for what he could do for them. So, so I told him too, I was like, you know what the saddest thing about you is? Is like, you don't even know these people that you're around. You're their bitch. <laughs> I was like, they only have you around because when they ask you to jump, you ask them how high. Yeah, You're their little bitch. That's mm. why they have you around. You're not their friend. You didn't earn their respect. They don't respect you at all. If you died tomorrow, they wouldn't shed a fucking tear. That's and you right. don't even understand that. Right. And so when I see Tongso, I see my cousin and it makes me so sad. I think a lot of us have to realize maybe we're all a bunch of Sangtex, man. Like that's why it's in Santek's perspective. Mm -hmm. Be like, mm -hmm. hey, like you might have been in some fights, you might have, so have I, you know. Mm -hmm. But like realize you're just like me. We're we're not actual Kangpes. We're yeah. not that. And that's, how, <laughs> that's how my dad and my fucking remember my youth pastor. Yeah, they look at me like Santek. They meet like they're just like you know how I told I told you how that pastor was so proud of me that I didn't beat up that kid. It was like that for me. I always watch this movie and think about how that pastor would tell me, look, me and your dad, we talk about it. He won't tell you. He's like, but me and your dad talk and we're so proud you're not like us. Yeah. He's like, because you're a good kid and you're smart too and you're using it like yeah. the way you can. And that's so your dad would never tell you that. Though. In that moment, that's why I resonated that in that part in the scene when um, uh, fucking the Zhang boss, what's his name? Uh, Chun Sok. Chun Sok. Yeah. When he was grabbing Chun Sok's cheek and he mm. goes, he's like, what does your dad do? Yeah. And he starts beating the shit him. He goes, like, who told you that I was fucking proud of that shit? Yeah. It's the same situation. Like, who told you that I was proud of being poor? Yeah. Like growing up in these shitty situations. These are just life experiences that I get to talk about. This it's is not just my life. Exactly. You know? And so when I see some like kids, they do this and they imitate these lives of of, of glorifying stuff that they're not a part <laughs> of. It's like People are just, uh, this is the life. This is their circumstance. Yeah. So what are you imitating right now? Yeah, I mean, we want to be you. Yeah. <laughs> we want to grow up with money. Yeah. We want to grow up knowing how this system works. We are just a product of our environment. That's it. Yeah. So you have a leg up in life and you're choosing to ignore it because you're, that's what I'm saying. The grass is always greener on the yeah. other side, you know? And like, I, I haven't, there's probably American stories like that that shows oh, like suburban kids getting into mess or whatever. Yeah. But like, Damn, this movie really shed that light like openly very well through Tongsu, a character like Tongsu. So, like, I don't know, like, if you guys probably have friends you can relate with between these four characters, you'll see yourself. Like, this is such great storytelling. You'll like, you'll see yourself, your friends, and either Tongsu, Chun Sok, you know, Sangtek, or whatever. Like, that's why the storytelling of this is just so well done. I but, wish but you guys got just watch it. I mean, there's a there's a chingo too that came out years later that sucked. But <laughs> sucked, dude. Sucked. It was all about the fucking swagger and the K drama and the fight yeah, scenes. I, I just hated that yeah, shit. Couldn't but, take it. You know, at the end of this film, it gets really sad because uh, he actually uh, Chun Sok actually does go to Hawaii because you know he murders Tong Su. Yes. It was pretty crazy. It was in broad daylight in public. It was a huge thing, a huge investigation. So he had to lead to Hawaii. Sad part about this is that he murdered his friend and he had to live with the guilt. And so it, he gets caught on purpose yep <laughs> he causes a fucking crazy scene cuts up all the waiters cuts himself so when the police find him this fucking 
gangpe going out like a gangpe, arms bleeding like a motherfucker, and this girl's like trying to like wrap him up, and she runs to the police, and this motherfucker's drug, just chugging, chugging that alcohol, and like that guilt. Almost trying to kill himself. Yeah, he's trying to kill himself, and he wants to get caught, and so it cuts to, he's he's in he's in prison, and uh, Tong Su's father. Is talking to him, right? Through the through um, what is that called when you <laughs> can talk to somebody in jail? Fuck, why am I? Oh, it's out? the glass, the glass thing. Yeah, Tong Su's father's like, I don't believe you did it. You didn't do it. I know you didn't. You were such a good friend. I considered you a son, right? And it's cutting between him and their class clown friend Jung Ho. Got a lawyer for him. Got a lawyer for him. Paid the prosecutors. Did all the bribes. Right Give with the politicians, speech, put it right yeah, through the little hole. Told him his yeah. defense. This this character, comic relief through and through, but still like, it, here's here's the problem. Like, Chun Ho is being the friend the way he thinks he should be a friend to Chun Sok. Yeah, but Chun Sok's not asking for this either. Yeah, he's not looking for a way out. This goes back to the conversation they had when like, yo, I ran away from home and my uncles and my dad didn't do shit. They didn't punish me, and if they did, I would have known better, right? And he's just blank listening to to this information. His the guy he murdered his father doesn't believe he did it, and his friend is like telling him, "You're out. You got this. You're you free. know, you're free." Yeah. And he's blank. He's fucking just speechless, just taking it or whatever. Then it cuts to the court scene, and then they lay out the case, and he confesses. He fucking confesses. Of his crimes, he says, "I did it. I told them to do it. I knew these people. Yeah, it was all a part of it." And everyone's shocked. The crowd is shocked. The fucking prosecutor is shocked. The judge is shocked. Everyone's like, "What the fuck?" Yeah, right. And he it goes back um, to the visiting whatever quarters, and Sang Tech's there to visit him, and he's signing in, and they say the relation to the prisoner. Chin and slow, cool. Yeah. Like, like, mise en scene. <laughs> that, that scene is so sad, and it's also very cool because, the you know, you could tell Sang Tech is devastated. Yeah. You know, because he's trying to question, why did you do it, and then why did you do it in the sense of why did you kill him, and then also why did you do it as in why did you admit to the murder? Yeah. Right. Well, the beautiful part is like they get ten minutes right, and the first part. They're going through an awkward talk, but they just keep, hey, come on, come on. And and we don't just, got time for this. Yeah, we they just be friends. keep catching up in life, and they're just, he's just being there as his fucking friend. You know, like, that's his only friend. To, yeah, my sister's getting married. And he's like, oh shit, I thought I was going to get yeah. it. He's like, what the fuck? How are you going to get it? You're in prison. And they're just hamming it up. He's being yeah. his fucking friend. It's like, I'll be back. I'll come and see you again. Yeah, saying yeah. that kind of shit. I mean, this is my only gripe is that it does a crossfade, and then all of a sudden, just crying. Yeah, he's like, "Why'd you do it?" I I, I would have edited it a little differently to say yeah. the time has passed and now it's like the last ten minutes. Yeah. But um, it's the last minute, and he finally just kind of just asks him straight up, right? Yeah, it's why'd like, you do it? Because it's embarrassing. Because that's not what gangsters do. It's like <laughs> it's like gangsters aren't supposed to be embarrassed. It's like I choose to be embarrassed. It's like he chose to punish himself because of the way. His uncles, his dad, all the other gangpes never punish him. The system now isn't gonna punish him. He's gonna get away with it. He's born and bred gangpe. He's like, fuck this shit, fuck this shit. This is the only way it's over. Yeah. And he confess to it. And he's like, because gangpe shouldn't be humiliated. Yeah. And he humiliates himself. He did it fucking my way. Yeah. What a gangpe gangster. It's so good. Yeah. This One movie of the- is so good. And then. Fade out to white, and they go back to the Olympic swimmer mm-hmm. and the turtle. And the turtle, the natural, and the guy who has to really train to get there. Out, Fuck. out in the ocean as they're swimming as little kids. But what did he remember about that debate in the first place? That Tong Su knew the turtle would win, and Chun Sok agreed with Tong Su because they're his, he's his friend. He was on his side. Yeah, <laughs> the innocence, you know. And like Chun Sok was just always on Tong Su's side. He just, if he had just, Tong Su knew he wasn't his rival. He wasn't, 
his competition. He was his fucking friend, Dong So. Yeah. <laughs> Dong So, yeah. And that's why this shit, this whole thing is called Chingu, dude. It's Chingu. not called Gangpe. It's called yeah. Chingu. It's called Chingu. It's about friendship and those relationships. You know, that's that's crazy too. It's like Dong Su just, I'm saying Dong Su's situation is so sad. He had everything. Yeah. You know, he just chose not to see it. He couldn't see it. He it was, was loved. He had friends. He he could have studied if he wanted. He was just fucking up just because he was following Chun Sok. Yeah. Chun Sok's fucking up because he wasn't made to study. Yeah. Even though he was a smart fucking kid. You know? And then he kind of matured later in life. Yeah. After all the damage was already done. Right. And then now he's now like him trying to be this good guy right for his friends it doesn't translate anymore because the damage is already done because mm -hmm. when that was necessary it wasn't done at that time yeah and so now the damage is he can't even see it now he's just like oh, i don't get this guy like we're friends right we're friends yeah i mean i mean that that bathroom scene is is the most memorable because that is tong su's trauma mm -hmm. right it fucks him up for the rest of his life the rest of the movie and it, it speaks a lot like about us too right like sometimes we act on resentment and it's resentment from when I was fucking 19 years old. What the fuck was I thinking about when I was 19? Yeah, yeah. Not the shit I'm thinking about now. Why am I worrying like a 19? Why am I resenting like a 19? Why am I hurting? Or even younger kind of things. Like it, it's blatantly showing out like what friends, like when when Chun Sok's telling Sang Tech, like friends don't say sorry to each other. Yeah. Meanwhile, Tong Su's just like either waiting for an apology or having to say an apology. You know, yeah. he just doesn't fucking get the friendship that yeah. he had with Chun Sok. Tragedy. It's such a tragic story. Yeah. But this is what I mean by like really, like really good films. Like it makes you think about stuff in your own personal life, even mm -hmm. if you haven't really even gone through it, right? Yeah. And so sometimes too, when 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 I watch a film and it's very few and far between lately where I've seen a lot of films where I really, really enjoy. And I always go back to films that I that I the the why to why I like these films is because it makes me feel like I'm in these characters' positions mm, a lot, mm. you know, like things tie so well together. And I think nowadays, because films, um, because of like a lot of like um, CG graphics, explosions, or every there's you, no nuance. Yeah, there's you can get away like, with a know, lot of these yeah. things without having to have a good story. I think that's why a lot of people don't like Marvel films mm. because uh, if you weren't a Marvel fan before. And you don't have nostalgia to kind of tie these pieces yeah. together. They don't know what the fuck is going on. They're like, none of this makes sense. Yeah, it's just you, another Lord of the Rings or some shit. <laughs> exactly. Mean, They're like, like yeah. none of these stories make sense. I don't get what's going on. So I understand because uh, one of my personal friends, he, he's a fucking film buff. Mm. He hates Marvel films because he never grew up with Marvel. And so yeah. he's watching. He goes, how do they expect me to know this stuff? Yeah. <laughs> he's like, this shit's a fuck. This is so stupid. Like, yeah. I don't get this shit. This, none of this shit makes sense. He goes, the only one that kind of made sense that you don't need to watch it is logan yeah <laughs> <laughs> he goes like yeah. you don't need to watch it because it's you know it's it's you're basically it's a story about you know logan and his life falling apart mm -hmm. <laughs> you know and then try to find meaning towards the end of his life yeah. so he goes like i can i can see that i can get that he goes the other films he goes i don't know what the fuck's yeah, going because on because you have to start believing in aliens and then like okay so then there's a stone okay so then there's this okay yeah exactly so it's like the reason why we like these films is because we grew up with it yeah so we already there's nothing that needs to be explained yeah so but when somebody sees it with fresh eyes it's like Yo, what the fuck is yeah. this stupid film? <laughs> should know? we should we explain Saturday too? Like, <laughs> uh, so so if if in Korea, it's not really a. I guess it's kind of a dialect, right? But it's country yeah. country talk. It's yeah. like it. It's not like in in terms of southern talk in America because you could still understand yeah. what they're saying. They I, just have a little bit of a southern drawl. I would think it's more like us Americans trying to understand Irish people. <laughs> it's English but you're like what yeah. they have their own slang their own like yeah. pronoun all that shit so it's like it's yeah. almost like that like if you're Korean you understand what they're saying but it's yeah it's different and it, it's it's got a cadence it's got a dance it sounds tonal yeah like Japanese but it's it's just straight phonetic and there's also like um, and they curse really well in it <laughs> yeah so so my mom used to speak in us hot to a lot yeah. so a lot of the curse words that I know is actually like country slang mm -hmm. which I didn't know <laughs> You know, I don't know these things. I'm not questioning this stuff as a kid. And then there's also uh, like Chebudo, which is like Chejudo, like Korean language, right. which you think Saturday is hard to understand. Yeah. Chebudo is like, I don't understand a fucking word. <laughs> like, I don't understand I, anything. Like, their words are completely different. Yeah. It doesn't sound like, I think, like, for example, for us, 
dog means like kangaji. Yeah. And I think there's like kansengi or something like that. <laughs> it's like a different complete. I think my halmani spoke that shit. She saw she spoke some shigor ass Korean. <laughs> yeah. Where I just like what the fuck. But I understood her because I grew up with it. Yeah. Like my mom's side, they're they're all satori. My dad's side's pretty whole. And but man, I get jealous of my cousins because they all speak satori. Yeah. Like fuck, I wish I spoke it like that. <laughs> that shit sounds like some country bumpy yeah. ass shit to me. <laughs> but though. I like. I it. hate the way that sounds, dude. Because that's how my grandpa spoke. Oh well, yeah. Right? So when he would ask for stuff, he go, "You go boko." Like, What'd so, you say? I'm like, "What the fuck are you saying right now? Speak <laughs> Korean, bro." <laughs> yeah, I tell you what, I'm yo, speak some fucking Korean, oh, guy. Geez. Yeah, he go boko. <laughs> Yeah, you know, I was like, "What is this?" Huh? Another note too is like the the school teachers. They remind me of my fucking church pastors. Oh yeah, for sure, the, dude. Like you're not really shit, but because of your authority, you can fucking do this shit to me. Yeah, you know. I mean, I told that story before about those three pastors who who fucking shaded me out of mm-hmm. a thousand bucks. If I explain to you what they look like physically, it's like, <laughs> like these fucking. Fucking pudgy as soft as fish looking motherfucking care bear looking bitches. <laughs> like sometimes I wish I could have brought up my hand. Like, I'll fucking punch you in your goddamn face to these pastors. You know, so funny. But they, they, I just like took it. Like, so Mariel is watching this K drama right now, right? Yeah. And she could sense me getting irritated because there's this one character that is a CEO of this company that's fucking over his his stepdaughter, <laughs> right? And he has that Korean I just she looked to his face, yeah. right? And I'm looking at him, and as I'm watching this kid, I don't know what's going on, but I'm getting angry. <laughs> and I was like, look at this guy's <laughs> fucking face. And Mary's like, why are you cursing so much? And I was like, he just has that fucking face that I saw at every church where this I just used yeah. to fucking talk down to me. Stupid little fucking bald ass fucking yeah. I'm getting hella angry. But it's like, bro, if I didn't know who the fuck you were, <laughs> like it just kick you in your goddamn <laughs> yeah. fucking teeth. Yeah. You know, like I think that's one of those things. Like that's why I always go back to that old KK pastor mm-hmm. like so Chun Sok tells Sang Tech like don't start a fight unless you're gonna finish it and it's like and if you start a fight like beat him yeah like, hurt him till he's a cripple yeah till he's begging for mercy that old KK youth pastor told me the same thing it's like there's no mercy in in LA in Koreatown you beat them until they're crying he said he beat someone till his teeth were out There was blood everywhere, and he was holding up his hand while he's punching him in the face. He said, "I was trying to knock him out, man. He wouldn't knock out." Oh. And he said, "This guy was just sitting there, like with no teeth, like." <gasps> <gasps> and he's like, "And I just kept beating him until he fell asleep." And he's like, "That's how you do it. That's how we did yeah, it." Yeah, I never do shit like that. Fucking, you know. Nice. And I was like, "Okay, But, I'm Santek." Yeah, <laughs> I was Santek. I'm a Santek. So when I, I, I and I told this a long time ago, I think it was on a JK News or something. But I think a lot of the kids didn't understand is because I'm a Santek too, right? Yeah. But it doesn't mean that the older youngs weren't giving me gangpe advice. Yeah, like so, we didn't see some shit and have to be yeah, there with them. <laughs> yeah, it would suck, you know. Yeah, and I remember too. It's like. Because I was a big kid and I was always like the bigger kid in the group. So they always wanted me to fight, right? Whether it was fight somebody new in the group or they would want me to, they would just put me out there. They would put me in really bad situations. But one of the biggest advice that they always gave me was this. They goes, when you beat somebody, when we're, when we're throwing down and you're fighting somebody, they always said this shit. And it used to creep me out. But I understood. They said, if you're not beating them up, like fucking them up to try to kill them, they're going to kill you first. Mm. And so what that means is like, You can't punch somebody thinking that you don't want to send them to the hospital. Yeah. Because that's not what they're thinking about when they're trying to hurt you. Yeah. And that was like the scary thing for me. Mm. And, you know, in my mind, as they're saying this shit, I'm like, yeah, that's right. After when I went <laughs> away, I'm though? like, oh my God, <laughs> these people are crazy. Yeah, you know? Dude. You yeah. know, but that was their advice. But you know, it did save my ass a lot too. But that's it kind of goes with that line of like, You're either about this shit or you're not. I wasn't about this stuff, yeah. <laughs> you know. But I just remember this them telling me that I'm trying to act all hard and shit. I'm like, yeah, cuz that's exactly what you're supposed to do. And I walk away. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. all these people are crazy. Yeah, like, <laughs> like I'm not gonna fight anybody. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just leave it. That's okay. I know. Oh my, oh, that's okay. Oh, oh, yeah, okay. just leave me out. Oh, he's gonna be bitchy, 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 Yeah. Yeah, like uh, uh, when, you know, in like Tacoma too, like I got those kind of youngs, man, like who put me in a situation to fight my fucking friends, dude. <laughs> you know, <they're laughs> like, like Wait, why are we doing friend? this? They Let's just, fight. Yeah, they just wanted to see oh. a fucking cockfight and make mm-hmm. us fight each other and shit. And 
you know, we, we grew up under the shit or whatever. But man, in the ugliness of every time we talk about fucked up shit, like the the friendship that this movie portrays, though, dog, like, like uh, the the meaning of like forgiveness and unconditional love through not saying having to say sorry to a friend who will, you know, who doesn't have to you know be there to forgive because he's already loves you anyway kind yeah. of thing. like we experience the fullest of those things dude, to it's a friends. weird if, if you're not korean or korean american it, it's hard to explain how fucked up they would treat you but love you that much <laughs> at the same time <laughs> like, last week he gave a motorcycle <laughs> this week he like bought me lunch and yeah. he took me to the arcade this like, this so, young, like, it, it would be like some weird shit where they would fuck you up, right? They would yeah. beat you up. But somebody else would come and try to fuck with you and they go, hey, only I do that to him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fucking touch. Oh, shit. Dude, that's for real. Because like when like my young's rivals would <laughs> fuck with us, oh, they get so pissed at so, those guys. I was like, but honestly, last week you guys beat me up 10 times yeah. worse than they did. It's like, so, that's just me. Yeah. <laughs> Holy eye, knock out his teeth. Don't you dare touch his balls. That's reserved for my foot. Could that go? It's like, thanks, I guess. Oh, shit, man. <laughs> Korean culture is so fucking yeah. weird like that. You know, a part of me is like, I understand that I'm not going to do that, right? But a yeah. part of me is kind of be like, mm, they're kind of missing out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, they were there for me. Like, seriously, I, I really see it as like the my friends that are younger than me have no idea the experience we grew up under. Yeah. They have no idea what that's like. I feel like that's part of like the Korean American millennial experience, probably. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cause it's over. You don't see that shit. They don't do that. You know, I actually got really sad thinking about how you know, our experience with uh Korean American culture is very unique and the next generation is not gonna mm. have this. Like for example, the harmony that makes panchan. Mm. <laughs> they're, they're not gonna have that. Right. You know what I mean? They're not gonna have the the Korean market, the Ajima harmony making panchan that doesn't speak mm. any English. Yeah. This next generation won't have that. They're, You're gonna get it from Costco, bro. <laughs> yeah. You're gonna get Vons or Safeway or Fred some Meyer, shit, right? Kim kimchi, man. You're gonna get it from a fucking place in Silver Lake from a white lady. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's selling kimchi for $17 yeah. for a fucking little mason jar. Yeah. I mean, like, just for example, we look at the Japanese who've been here since 1900, mm -hmm. right? And now there's fourth, fifth Japanese people living in Torrance. Yeah. Like, they look straight Japanese, but they're straight American. Yeah. Straight up, you know? I get scared uh, a little bit of, of like, our culture dying. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why I'm, I'm very particular about preserving my culture right. while I live in this country. Right. You know, my kids will learn how to, they'll, they will speak Korean better than I speak Korean. Mm. And it's important to me. You could marry whoever the fuck you want. Culture to me has nothing to do with the way your eyes are, your skin color, whatever. Yeah. It's it's the tradition, the language, the food. That's where it all lives for me, right? Th that, <laughs> He's going to come and call you dad. You're like, my name is Appa. <laughs> yeah. It's like, hey, dad. Dad, is yeah, who's yeah, fucking dad? Yeah, the dad? Who's dad? <laughs> yeah. It's Appa, Appa, you know? yeah. So, you know, when I... When I have kids, I it's very important to me. Like you could marry whoever, right? Mm. But I think I, for them, I would ask them. It's like marry whoever, you know, find that love. But I would ask for you and you and the person that you marry to actually learn about our culture, learn mm. about our food, how we behave, what we do, and also learn the language. It's important. It's important to me. Yeah, I'm not going to dictate who you're with. But if 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 now that you know the language and you know our culture, the person that you're with, whether they're white, black, Mexican. Asian, Indian, whatever it yeah. is, I would like them to know the language and the culture too. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, you man. Know? Like, um, I think that's one of the cool things about growing up in Tacoma. You got friends like Dan. He's half white, half Korean, all about Korean culture. <laughs> what was his fake Korean name? Murkogi. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it is. Dan Fisher. Dan so Fisher. He's fish. Yeah. And no, I mean, like, I grew up with a friend, he half white, half Korean, all about the Korean culture. He looked like Kangta if he was white. That's so <laughs> yeah. Grew up with us and shit. I mean, like, um, he was our captain growing mm -hmm. up. You know, he was my brother's best friend, too. Mm. They were fucking tight. And man, um, one time I was with my crush inside someone's house, like, um, and she was coming out of the bathroom. I was going in and wash my hands. And my friend, his name is Sean, he goes, Oh, Ed and Sumi are in the bathroom together. <laughs> right? Oh my God. And what I a got, fucking cock blocker, dude. But I got so mad. Now, mind you, like I said, he's half white, half Korean. 
He's black belt taekwondo, star baseball player in high school. He's the fucking man. Like, mm -hmm. and for some reason, I walked up to him and I socked him right in the chest because I was so mad. And I saw his face. I was like, "That's it. I'm gonna die." <laughs> I was like, oh shit! Uh -huh. He grabbed me and he pulled me into the same bathroom. Mm -hmm. And he goes, "Look, now we're both in the bathroom. Why are you so angry, man? What's wrong?" And then I don't know why I started telling him what was going on at home. And this fucking guy, man, he gave me a big hug and he started fucking praying for me, man. How and lucky! <laughs> You're like, oh my, oh life my is god, over. this guy could have ripped my head off. Yeah. But he was like, look, man, like, I love you. And, yeah. and like, God loves you, dude. Like, don't be angry and all this shit. And I'm just crying in this bathroom. <laughs> He's like, you know what? Just beat me up. <laughs> Bro, a month later, he passed away. Oh, really? A month later, yeah. How? Like, um, he he was born with, like, this really weak heart. <gasps> yeah. Crazy. And he was supposed to die when he was, like, a year old. But by the time he's 15, like I said, like, Black belt taekwondo looks like Kang Ta, like H O T, like good looking dude, but half white. You know, um, break dancer, first one I've ever seen to do a windmill. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Man, super talented baseball star, and he was at a taekwondo tournament, and his heart gave out. Yeah, heart gave out. Did his parents know about his heart condition? Yeah, they always knew. They never told us, and it was the kind of dude that fucking lived his life. That's all crazy. That. And he was like our captain type. Yeah. You know? It's so weird that I say that shit because like our parents didn't teach us. We're just Koreans and yeah, it's just yeah. in our DNA. We followed this guy. Yeah. And he was my brother's best fucking friend. And like, yeah, that, that was so rough during that time, you know? And then my brother became, he was like the art. We started following my older brother, you know? And we yeah, how did your brother deal with that shit? That must have been rough. Yeah, that's a... Uh, it was a rough time for him. Yeah. He he was pretty silent. I didn't hear him talk a whole lot. Yeah. yeah. He was a very silent guy and came back from the fucking Navy as a knockout artist all of a sudden. That's crazy. You know? And so, like, yeah, like, my brother, that's his own story. Like, I don't want to tell, honestly, but that was his best friend. That was my friend. And I, I see that group of friends growing up and to see a, our Chun Sok type just die. Yeah. Out of the blue. And you always, and you know, when you, when I, hear that too it's kind of like a big part of your heart's always like who would that person be right now yeah you know who would he be to I us i swear to god he'd be in mlb or in the ufc yeah or a pop star or <laughs> literally some, something. or a doctor, or doctor something. yeah he just yeah. had endless potential and it kind of sucks to you know my well the, there was somebody in our elementary school my story is a little different yeah especially because we didn't look up to this guy but this guy <laughs> uh i guess he had a he had a heart condition too he had an overgrown heart and he also passed away, I think, in, uh, he was like sleepwalking. Uh, uh, this is, I don't think this is exactly what happened. Up? Somebody woke him up, his heart stopped. I think his um, his mom did or his dad did. <sighs> and so he was sleepwalking. I don't think they knew. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this is in elementary school, I found this out. But I, if I look it through my adult lens, I'm pretty sure his mom didn't knew that he was sleepwalking. And mm -hmm. they're like, hey, what are you doing? You know, uh, and they kind of shook him awake. But that jolted him and it. Cause something happened with his heart, but he had a heart attack and he yeah. died. Fuck. And this was like in elementary school. And let Damn. me tell you something too. Like the funny thing is, is like me and my brother actually got into a fight with that kid, like a couple, like a few months before he passed <laughs> away with him and his younger brother. Oh shit! Right? You guys must have felt terrible. Well, no, I did not. Oh because... shit! Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, that's, you and my story is a little different, right. but I remember it's because my brother and I went to this place called uh, Koryo Taekwondo, and they were also they were like in a Robinson's Taekwondo. Right. Let me tell you something: Robinson's Taekwondo and a traditional Korean spot are yeah. two different things. Yeah. And so they were talking mad shit. This is actually the fight. This is a, a fight that me and my brother both got into with that family and we fucked their asses up <laughs> yeah. just to show you the difference between Korean yeah. Taekwondo like the Tang Sudo mi yeah. military Tang Sudo versus your little Robinson's Taekwondo like and the, I remember the I, Olympic Taekwondo the point my, my, system my brother did like this spinning heel kick and I remember I fucking back straight kick kicked that kid in his stomach and he fucking yeah. flew because we did tournaments we did sparring hardcore not point contact yeah. like beating each other's hey, ass that tournaments. spin is to generate torque <laughs> not to get a point exactly <laughs> this, it was different back in the day and so i remember i just fucking back straight kicked the living fuck out of this kid and i didn't know about that dude's heart condition until oh, later shit. but the kid passed away and like in his sleep yeah <gasps> Oh yeah. shit, dude. So my brother, you gotta live with that guilt. Oh, <laughs> I did that to the younger brother. He was fine. Shit. He's still like damn. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, 
Fuck, I don't know what the hell. We, Maybe we that's why Taekwondo sucked. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, like, uh, well, to take it back, like, even my friend, like, his mom, like, this is 99, so his mom buried him in his Jinko jeans. Oh, wow. Yeah. And, like, the photos of us, like, when we were all hanging out and shit. So that was, like, a, a good time. And, and like, it, when I watch the movie Chingu and, like, see the friendships I go through and even the loss, like, um, as a Korean American, like, if you understand that uncontrollable emotion and passion that's part of you, like, and enacting on your resentment or your words and, like, and the tragedy behind making such decisions, yeah, gotta watch this movie. Such you'll love beard. it. You'll you'll fucking love this film. I, yeah. I I don't know a single person who ever watched Chingu and didn't either cry, take something away from it, or just yeah. love the film and watch it again. Yeah, you know. So if you guys ever wanted to have like a step into Korean cinema and a a good look into how like Korean culture and friendship and loyalty, um, Chingu is a really great way to start. It's the film. It's yeah. the place to start. They're like, oh, all Korean people are gangsters. Yeah. It's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> no, it's a little more real. Than yeah. That. Yeah. There's consequences. Well, guys, I hope you liked that episode where we reviewed uh, one of our favorite Korean films of all time. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Maybe we'll do another one, depending. If you guys don't like it, we'll probably still do another Sorry. one. Sorry. <laughs> 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 but uh, Genius Brain Podcast, every Thursdays and Sundays, the topics are always random. You don't know what you're going to get. Sometimes yeah. a film review, sometimes bullshit. I really do got to bring a box of tissues because Mariel cried here yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm going to just be fucking crying in my podcast. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I'm going to need that too. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you can find Ed at Ed Park VP. Find him on Instagram. Follow him there. Follow him his journey there. And you'll see him back on the podcast. And we'll yeah. see you all next time. Thanks. Peace. Peace. Go to Hawaii. <laughs>